Oh, didn't let me. Mm. Uh-oh. Checked it. Mm. Uh, it's yeah, live, Andrew, though. Andrew, it went through for you. You must have both hit it at the same time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, Alan left. That's Alan's favorite move. He's like, "Oh, it started. Let me walk away immediately. Yeah, let me take <laughs> off." And... I don't know. He's back with a book. Got to read to us three pages of <clears throat> notes for the Yokohama. Oh Bay. shit! That's hardcore, bro. Wow, dude. Yeah. Got a lot. Take it? respect i was gonna take notes and then i was like ah, i'll just i'll just use my memory that was a <laughs> no that's idea. a good idea you know i always i always like those those reaction channels though that actually take notes while they're watching something so they know they remember what they want to talk about at the end oh those are always the best ones whatever i know we all we all <laughs> we all suck at this <laughs> whatever dude if i look down to write a note then i miss something i, I appreciate the compliment champ <laughs> i'm gonna start pausing it and writing notes and then just hitting hit and play again just take, <laughs> you're, you're take not voice to... notes during the reaction <laughs> i love that idea 52 drummer hits idea. symbol uh... <laughs> Welcome to the Guys of Guys Japanese News Podcast, where you talk about Japanese music and other music-related news. Uh, we're the Gaijin Guys. We are. Here we are again. Uh, just in case you're wondering, our sponsors are us. Uh, you support Your support on Patreon helps us tremendously. Check out our merch on gaijinguys.com. Join our newsletter for updates when we post music news. Today, we are talking about preconceptions and misconceptions about fandoms. And mm. is guitar still relevant in popular music? That was... That's a very nice way of saying that, Ryan. Thank I appreciate you. We also, it. <laughs> we're also going to talk about the band made Yokohama Arena because uh, some some more of us have had a chance to watch the show. Finish the show. We got, we there's got also some support. signature gear from Misa and Akane, new Nemophila, and more. So, guys, how was your weeks? Let's go. Uh, we're going to start with Champ. Are we? That's oh, damn it. That was, that was I got it last week. <laughs> I didn't think there was a chance it was going to be me. For yeah. the last year, dude, it's always you first. <laughs> And every time I say, I didn't do shit this week, guys. Like, what the? <laughs> you just need to get out of the way. You're the quickest yeah. one. To... If you did do something, though, you actually did something good. I you, did? Uh, yeah, yeah. You shared an amazing song for us to check out this week. Oh, for, okay. For once. And, and it's so yeah. funny, too, because I put zero effort into actually finding that song. You, like, it opened just... YouTube and picked the first thing that <laughs> popped up. I literally did. <laughs> I, I'm, I trying to, I'm trying to help you out here, man. No, <laughs> I, 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 I respected it, but I can't, I can't take the fake praise. You know what I mean? Like, I have to earn it's it not first. Fake. I don't feel it like it was I did. real. You made it fake. <laughs> okay. East Coast people. It's a gimmick. I got to uphold some part God of it, at least, it. man. I got to uphold part of the gimmick. Anyway, I'm to help you out here. <laughs> uh, this week, what happened? Very little. Uh, I am going to the Inflame show on Sunday, on uh, next Sunday, though. Nice. So that, that is the next cool thing that I'm going to be doing. Oh, so you're getting out of the house. That's that's a revelation. Yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> and I don't even really want to go to the show, to be totally honest, because, like, first of all, they're playing with Meshuggah, and I'm not really a Meshuggah guy, but, like, and they're opening for Meshuggah. And so I'm not, I don't, I, don't I heard Meshuggah's really good live though. I've heard the same. I've heard the yeah. same, but I just don't like their, their chug and I, I don't know, whatever. I, it's fine. Too many chugs. But I looked at their set list <laughs> and it was like the worst set list they've ever put together. And it was like mostly songs from the last 15 years. And then like even the big songs from their big albums in the past, they're not playing. So I'm like, it's actually the least I've ever looked forward to going to a show that I just wanted to see then. a band of. Okay. Well, it was free, and you know it's hard to say no to free shit. Yes, I'll true, see this true. bad because it's free. Yeah, but but that's <laughs> it. I really didn't. You know, I worked all week. I got you know that's that's pretty much was was none of it's cool. So go on. Anyway, hey hey, I know somebody that did do something cool this week though. Who did? This guy right here, Mister Potter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thanks for the setup. Is it my turn then? <laughs> yeah, you're up. <laughs> Yep, I got a kazoo. That's it. That was the name. Oh. What'd you name it? Uh, okay. <laughs> no, Rose is gonna be pissed if I turn this into a bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, so I've gotten like six hours of sleep in the past week. Normal. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, on Monday. Oh, the, the past week. Yeah. Past week. <laughs> That's not normal. <laughs> Monday uh, morning, Rosie started having contractions. So she literally waited as long as humanly possible. And by the time we went in, because the room she wanted wasn't available that morning she called and checked and so she's like no i'm waiting for that room wow so she by the time we got in there she was already eight centimeters dilated and was like ready to push as soon as we got there so it was literally like like she did an amazing job she did like i think three and a half hours after we got there it was all over Damn. Which I was so grateful that it was such a, it it felt short for me, but I'm sure, yeah. like, watching her go through that was so crazy. How many hours? But did the labor last? Well, the labor was 16 hours, but she waited so long to go to the hospital that we were only there for three and a half hours. <laughs> that is so <laughs> fucking crazy. <laughs> I know. She but go like, Rosie. She probably actually saved you guys a shit ton of money. By yeah, I probably saved you about 40 grand. For all those hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they charge by hour, don't they? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. I think they charge by patient probably, but like if somebody else can move in there, you know, that, yeah. that baby, that baby popped out there like there's another, that's another patient. Another fifteen hundred dollars an hour. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they charge by hour eventually. Like they're like, all right, you overwhelm. <laughs> you don't stay here. Oh, they they then, charge for whatever the hell they can. Yeah, dude. it's they ridiculous. Just, and everything is like five million times more than it's worth. Yeah. Like yeah. that they paid. I'm for pretty it. sure they just like make up a receipt at the end. They're just like they literally the do. That we're charging they you do. for. And then, you know, whatever they feel like putting on it. I've learned you can dispute all those charges, by the way. And they will knock off a lot of it. (laughs) Speaking of Rosie's toughness, like, that's when I was in the hospital and we got the bill for that. It was like, okay, our lives are over. And then she called and got it literally like 90% taken off because she was just badgering them constantly. And like literally always do this. That that just proves every, every how much bullshit hospital. hospital bills are. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I, I yeah. I dude, I got my appendix taken out and I went in there, they gave me a uh it was like a six thousand dollar bill, like emergency surgery, blah blah blah, <clears throat> all this stuff, right? I didn't pay anything for like the first couple months and they started calling my house or whatever. I said, What am I being charged for? I have Obamacare. This is back when Obamacare was around or whatever, right? And they were like, oh, you know, you can actually just come in and sign up for this, like, which is basically like the poor person's ability to get surgery and not got church charged for a thing. I went in there, I signed this document. It took me all of five minutes. I ended up owing them like four hundred dollars out of the six thousand that they were charged for. It's so so uh, confusing. The reason why they do that too is because the insurance companies just pay it. They just pay it like my my accident was sixty thousand dollars, and they're trying to charge me. Luckily, I got the car insurance to pay for a lot of it. But when I was initially calling, we knocked it down to like fifteen k, which is still a lot. Mm-hmm. But it was yeah. it's ridiculous. Huge drop though. Ridiculous. I, Huge drop. Listen, they're gonna get away with whatever they could get away with. So you just yep, gotta yeah. call them on their bullshit. Yep. Yeah. It. Right. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Wave. I'm happy for you. everything's. Uh, yeah. What, doing thank well. you. So, so what's the baby's name again? River, River Poe. River Poe. Yeah, named after uh, yeah. Uh, Rosie's grandpa and little brother that uh, passed away a long time ago. So oh, I thought you were leaning hard into the bandmate fandom there, dude. I was like, oh, like wow. 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 <laughs> no, River no. Poe. Holy Bro, crap. <laughs> that was just a happy coincidence for me. Dude, until you just said that, I legitimately thought that's why you named her Poe this what whole I time. Thought, dude. As if Rosie would go for that, dude. Uh, I, I was thinking, like, dude, he made some kind of crazy deal. Okay, with, this is Miku's Rosie. face right here. This is this is Miku's face to that <laughs> river. What? <laughs> this is my favorite picture from that show. <laughs> yeah. Pause at this moment. That, is this when they when they started playing the old videos and she's like, 
no, things. no. This is when she's uh, doing rocking me, but she makes this micro expression out of nowhere. Like, what the fuck are they doing up there? Like, that's literally <laughs> the look she's making. That's <laughs> hilarious. I fucking love it. Wow. Yeah. Well, this is, this is the song I've only watched it once. I got to watch it again. This is a song where Psyche doesn't sing. So I, I feel like she probably saw Psyche doing some crazy shit off to the side right there. I was like, what <laughs> the fuck be. is she doing? She was looking towards <laughs> fans, though. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> the the lore grows. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway. Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, wave. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, good good, good stuff, man. That, that's all that matters for Wade this week. Yeah. yeah. We came home. Well, we came home from the hospital after two days, and then we went in for a checkup Friday, and he had really high bilirubin in his blood. But we didn't find out. We got labs on our way out of the appointment. We didn't find out till we got back home, which was like 30 minutes away. So we had to go back and stay oh. overnight again Friday mm. night because he had he had jaundice. <laughs> oh. Which is why I was like, do I look yellow? <laughs> anyway. I don't think you catch jaundice. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all, all better now, though. Yeah, it's on the downtrend, so. That's good. Just giving us a little worry mm. right out of the gate here, but yeah, they love to do that, man. They love to scare you a little bit, right? And then those babies, they just want to prepare you for what's to come. <laughs> like, yeah. ah, I got jaundice. <laughs> How are you going to deal with this? My sister had it. Yeah, it's, actually, it's actually, uh, you know, that's like one of those things that, like, you know, they're always on the on their toes for. Like, there's a chance that the baby's going to have jaundice. Have to go into that little uh, incubator yeah. thing. Did it have yeah. to go into? Did River go into yeah, the incubator? The blue light. Yep, or whatever yep. it is. Yeah, we called my sister Glow Baby. She she had to be in it for like two weeks <laughs> after she came baby. home. Get the vitamin Aww. D, man. Yeah, man. Awesome, Alan. Oh man, it's been um a crazy week. Not as crazy as waves. Um, oh, that's good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was what? like, I had two babies. <laughs> yeah, I had three instead. <laughs> Triplets. <laughs> Speaking of which, I cracked an egg this morning and it was twins, which was cool. But anyway, that's unrelated. <laughs> that, 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 that's right. worth mentioning. You got to say, it doesn't happen often. We um, we finally got that fucking mixer under control. The learning curve is better, so we got that under control. We started recording drums, and that's really exciting because lots of good things are happening with the dichotic uh, music and everything. And hopefully some really cool special guest singers too are going to be joining us on this, which is awesome. And just been working on that and also putting up these videos. I just released all these videos today uh, or in the past two days. So East Eden and stuff we checked out uh, on live stream, this live stream today, we're going to check out Nemophila. We're going to break down the tracks and stuff. Can't, cannot wait to hear that song. So we just did the new one. Yeah. We just did our normal content and stuff and got that going. I've been playing a lot of guitar. It feels good to be inspired to play play a lot. And did a lesson with Ryan this week, which was fun. That was, that was actually one of my highlights. That's why I bring it up because I love seeing people get excited when they learn something <laughs> new. So yeah, man. wait, who who was teaching? Really you, cool. you gave Ryan a lesson, or yeah. Ryan gave you a lesson? Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. I, I can teach you how to play aimlessly up and down the neck, but you can actually give me some structure. <laughs> <laughs> um. So that was, that was exciting. That was, that was that was pretty cool doing that. So just that been very cool, man. Trying trying to stay up, trying to stay afloat. Yeah, you know, man. Again, you're doing a good job. You look good over there. Your beard looks good, bud. Thank you. You're yes. welcome. It's good. Ju- it's good judgment of health. How's his beard look? It looks beard looks a little rough. <laughs> He's not doing too good. Oh, shit. I mean, it really like <laughs> seriously though. <laughs> <All right? laughs> yeah. If somebody's beard looks beard. great, you know that they're not having like a, a terrible life right now. All right, they have enough time to worry about their. Yeah, beard. they're, they're not going to spend fine. that much time on it if if the if the rest of their life is ass. Right. It's a good point. Uh, so if you see a guy with it. a ratty beard, give him a hug. <laughs> yeah, he might need yeah, it, maybe. Bro. Maybe not. Or he yeah, might be like, or he might be a baby metal fan. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, oh my oh, god. Oh shit. Been, oh yeah, I forgot uh, about that. I did have ha- that happen this week. I got pissed yeah, off this week. I mean, that did happen, but uh, uh right, 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 I got right, over right. it pretty fast. Yeah, uh, we'll that in a second. Yeah. We'll try gonna, to, I just wanted to, I just wanted a little foreshadowing for yeah. The, for the next throw, time. throw in the nuggets. <laughs> throw in the nuggets for what's to come. You guys are in for it. <laughs> But yeah, just working on breakdown videos. I'm going hard, going hard in the paint with those, getting filming done. Um, 
because we, we were putting out a little less content, but we're we're still keeping up the quality of it, getting back to the live streaming and stuff since I've been back from tour. Good. And it's been good. Like I'm like with Wave, just trying to get this album done as fast as possible because it's been so long since I put out music and just keeping it going afterwards. It's so tempting nice, to want to release stuff, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah it's like, the, it's the hardest till, part uh, is just sitting on stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what she said. We, <laughs> we have like 30 different... We have like 30 songs written out. Like half of them are just all over the place and the other half are kind of structured, you know, for the most part. And it's like, okay, now we need to choose which ones are going to work and which vocals are catchy and things like that. Just trying to figure all that stuff out. All right. Can I do backup yeah, vocals we, on one of your songs? Yeah. Really? We can do the haze. <laughs> I can do the haze. <laughs> I just want to, I'll be part of the group chant. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can be Jason Newstead on vocals. <laughs> you can hear him on there. Are you in there? Yeah, oh, he's wait, on there. He's there somewhere, right? We, we recorded it. Yeah, <laughs> it's about as loud as his bass was on the first album that he was <laughs> right. on. You know, mm. which we we I want to like collab because I know we've been talking about this forever, but for Monster. all of us to come together and like actually collab on a song, we need to pick. We need to like someone to produce it. Obviously, we'll have Alan mix it, but like. I want to produce a song with you guys and just make it happen, you know. So honestly, yeah. shouldn't be a, it. Should it shouldn't be as hard as like 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 we're all here. We talk to each other every week and we all play music, so we should be able to do this pretty quickly if we really. Yeah. Why did you hesitate? Why did you hesitate, Champ? When you said we all play music, because he includes himself in that. <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, I, I'm, I'm part of this. this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's exactly right. I was thinking about like, if you're like say this, music. I have a guitar. I don't know if I would say that I play it. He wasn't sure if he wanted to finish that sentence. Oh, yeah. He's like, he's like, I'm accidentally setting myself up for more work during the week. Fuck. Bro, I, bro, I'm a guitarist who just asked if I could do backup vocals on one of your songs. Like, how much commitment do you think I'm ready to throw? <laughs> Dude, you killed it on the rhythm guitar when we got together. Yeah. That was a, oh yeah, your thing. That was actually one of the most shocking things. You know, you downplay yourself so much. I was like, I wasn't expecting much out of you. <laughs> That's part of the gimmick, bro. You got to make people expect like, wow. the lowest so everything seems okay. You have the same philosophy as Eric. It, that philosophy drives me bananas. <laughs> I can't even handle it. Dude, that new Spider-Man movie stole that from you. Like, uh, <laughs> expect what? to be disappointed and you'll never be disappointed. That's Zendaya's freaking, line. Yeah. That's my mantra, dude. That's what I've been living by for years. Okay. Uh, it's it's your week, no. Ryan? My week's pretty good, man. Uh, I decided to just go ahead and restructure everything I do for YouTube and Patreon. No big deal. <laughs> wow. I was, dude, I was a... going... Don't worry, yeah. it'll happen again. You'll have to do it again. Oh, yeah. It's... But I was going about things the way You're I've been doing for a while. You're improving things. Yeah, I'm improving things, you know, but I, I just realized I was spending all my time doing one thing that wasn't really doing much, I guess. A bunch of videos, a bunch of editing, didn't leave time for anything else. Mm. So I decided to switch it up, and those other things actually are turning out to be uh, pretty good, man. So it was it was a good turn. I need to, I need to do a little catch-up, but more nice, original man. stuff, more breaking down songs, which... Uh, people have been calling for and i kind of doubted my ability to kind of do it but you know i'm figuring stuff out nice but yeah also alan mentioned we had uh had a lesson with him and i'm a guy some people when i mentioned lessons before people are like why are you going to take lessons it's like dude i just I, I i taught myself at a couple guys here and there that would show me things and i didn't really like i know how to do a lot of stuff but i don't exactly know what i'm doing sometimes or how to explain it and uh and also improvisation, I've got into a rut. So um, I asked Alan about how, what's a good way to get out of that. And uh, we had a pretty good, I don't know how long it was, but it's pretty good. Got yeah. me excited about learning some different things on guitar again. It's been, it's been a while. Yes. Yeah, I've been practicing. I've been practicing, dude. I've been going through that shit back and forth. Yeah. That's Ryan, awesome. Ryan was, Ryan was helping me out. I was trying to get more students. So I was like, I'm off. I was offering free lessons. Like, let me do a lesson. If you could do a review for me. Oh, yeah. nice. there you yeah. go yeah yeah but so we, we got like, stuff to offer this, this is actually really cool hell yeah dude yeah I've been, I, i've been grabbing a bass and doing those uh thirds back and forth yeah it's because it's like one of those things i always tell people like when you're trying to do it just like you gotta show people that you can do it and then 
you know, you grab grab it towards, you know, it's just making it easier because a lot of people complicate it online. That's that's how I feel. That's how I treat lessons. I'm just like, how can I make this like fun to understand? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. So. It was super easy to follow. And it it's just a thing that if you're a beginner, you've been playing, I've been playing for over 30 years, dude. And you think, well, I've been doing this. I, I know what I'm doing. And then it's like, well, you can all you can always learn something. I don't care how long you've been playing. You can always learn something from somebody. Yeah. And there's if you always think just... it all in all, you don't. Yeah. there's always just like there, there's tricks and stuff too that not everybody knows that like if we just share between each other it kind of reminds me of like you know before i took the sats i took an sat prep course right and all that was was tricks on how to figure out how they're asking the questions you know what yeah, i mean really? it wasn't it, it wasn't teaching you anything about the content that was going to be on the exam it was teaching you how to take the exam right that and that's be an eye-opening thing right yeah. there it, like, it, it how is exactly it is begin with. <laughs> <laughs> it's true right you can trick like you're trying to deceive it like it's trying yeah. to trick you yeah. and you're trying to beat it but like it's kind of the same as like when you already know how to play guitar but like you could get somebody to show you some more tips you know some more tricks yeah. some more things that are just going to make it even better yeah. yeah chances are if you if you you may not what happens is you don't know like the thing that will that will kick you off in a new direction you don't know mm -hmm. until you until you talk to somebody Mm -hmm. Whether it's in passing, you, you're like, all right, I'm going to give, I'll do one lesson and see what happens. And then you're like, oh shit, man, that's, that I can do, I can apply that to many different things, you know? So it's, it's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. I was so fucking scared to like show you anything. I'm like, fuck that. Well, what, what am I going to show him? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've done it before, but like, um, normally it's like, like you said, people that have experience don't really go and try to keep learning that's what's so yeah. cool about the japanese artists that we listen to because a lot of them still take lessons or they still research and yeah. still they're way more humble about it you know but some because i've been guilty of myself like i like damn i need to keep learning and stuff like that um that's why my teacher is joshua viles and i always go i interviewed him on here guys by the way you should check that out he uh i did an interview with him and i remember he did the same thing for me and just like opened up the door taught me a new way of learning and i was like wow wow his lessons were like, I took the biggest takeaway from him was like, wow, everything you're teaching can be applied to everything else very, very easily. Right on. Yeah, it's it's concepts more than it is like actual specific techniques sometimes, right? It's like the, the way that you think about it can change what what you can learn and how you can, uh, you know, approach yeah. it later. Yeah, there was, I was, I was trying to uh, just explain how, how I did things. And Alan's like, well, you, you kind of did what I'm showing you kind of accident there and i was like oh yeah so I, I went like today i was playing through some of the shit i usually do i'm like okay i I do kind of do that but now i didn't know what i was doing mm -hmm. but now <laughs> that i know it's like okay that thing i do by accident that sounds yeah. cool i can continue that and now i know what the hell i was doing so yeah. now i know why it sounds cool <laughs> it's little stuff like that that'll that'll uh benefit you right on so there's so yeah thanks for the uh lesson alan <clears throat> you're so, welcome <laughs> of the show i mentioned uh we're going to be talking about preconceptions and misconception conceptions about fandoms it'd be cool if i could say that correctly once <laughs> preconceptions <laughs> and misconceptions god i can't fucking That's do like it my whole freaking life dude is like wow anyway really there was a up. guy who said some dumb shit and now <laughs> wants to talk about it yeah i for the most part a lot of people understood what the video is about the whole point of the video i just want to make this very clear is that i was just trying to tell people out there that needed to hear it that it's okay to like what you want to like because the biggest thing is like a moment of weakness that i had uh, there's this guy who put up a video about bay metal pretty much calling them all pedophiles that's what it boils down to and um well and not not calling baby metal pedophiles but call, call them the fans, fans, fans. Pedophiles. Calling, i'm sorry calling the fans of baby metal pedophiles and insinuating other bands and projects because i know damn well he was suggested probably maximum hormone band made baby metal if you watch the video because i know the fans are crazy about japanese music and we like to tell everyone about it i went on reaction videos and suggested japanese bands we all have and we're really passionate about it because we know how great they are and we introduce them he goes on to saying he thinks they're all bots and stuff like that and blah, blah, blah. But anyways, I'm listening to the video. I'm on my way to uh, Guitar Center to pick up some stuff before practice. I'm wearing a Bay Metal shirt. And this is what gave me the idea to do the video. I'm like, let me check it out because a fan sent it to me. They're like, hey, I want to know your thoughts on this. And I, just, I don't know. It just hit me different that day. Like when I was listening to him saying like pretty much, oh, you're a pedophile. If you like, if you like Baby Metal because they're kids or whatnot or anything in the idol industry, which again... I like baby metal for the music. 
I really fucking love the music, like just flat out. It has nothing to do with who they are. Mm-hmm. If you cover them up, I genuinely love the fucking music. You know, sometimes people start with appearance first and then it goes to music. For me, with that, with Bay Metal, is music first, then appearance. I saw afterwards, you know. I didn't really think about that. Well, it didn't even come to my thought. But I understand with some people it could be reversed. Well, my point is he's saying all this stuff and I like walk in the guitar center. I literally felt disgusted, like wearing the shirt. Cause I'm like, Oh, are people looking at me thinking I'm like a fucking pedophile? <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's the, I couldn't get that thought out of my head Mostly. afterwards. Of course I got over it and I'm like, that's so stupid. But then I started thinking, I'm like, well, how many other people feel like this? How many other people are walking around like, feeling guilty about the music they like now it makes way more sense why people don't share the music they like because eric had told me before we started the channel he's like i never showed anybody max from the hormone because i didn't want to be made fun of i was like oh shit but he showed me and that's how the channel started so yeah that was what the video was about was kind of just to be like hey it's okay to like what you want to like you know ever and don't let other people sway you not to like something because I know it can affect people and I know it can make you not want to share your passion or what you like. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's all I have to say about But, yeah, it really pissed me off. It kind of made me sad, you know, about that that fact of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, my, it, I responded to you. I said it comes down to projection and lack of worldview when it comes to these judgments. They couldn't they couldn't like them. That person couldn't like them without, <laughs> without either being a pedophile or they lack of open-mindedness to see past their youth. I mean, that's what people get hung up on. Oh, they're young girls. That's there's only one reason you could well, like it. It's like, no dude, uh, what they're doing is different. The music's kick ass. What is the problem with liking something like that? Dude, you That's why I mean? it's projection too, because right. it's like, just because they can't understand why you would enjoy something for any other reason besides sexuality is because they can't. Right. Yeah. Like that's what's so crazy about it. They're outing themselves immediately by saying yeah, the other, like the other bullshit things. This dude said, if you want to talk about it, email me, he puts his email up and he <laughs> deletes all the comments and people prove, you know, like calling him out on his shit. Like, and right. yeah. And now and we're not going to name him, by the way, As you have a video video. you guys can share your comments on, like share it on my video, you know, helps me out. I appreciate it. And there you can get it out there, you know, and that's, yeah. I mean, normally I wouldn't release, a video like this and I, I told myself don't do this anymore but i was like since i had that certain reactionary emotion to it, i'm like i gotta i gotta make a video about it because i thought it was meaningful and hopefully help somebody out there yeah and it's it's one of those things where it's like it does go beyond just like this one exact specific principle that he's talking about where it's like if you like baby metal then you like little kid like first of all can i just respond by saying like does that mean if you watch stranger things like you you're a pedophile too because that show is mostly about kids like, right where's on. the Dude, difference, our... right? Like, where's the, it's an entertainment thing that involves, you know, people that are younger in some way or another, but there's all kinds of entertainment that we enjoy that involve people that are younger. It's so like, mm-hmm. I don't understand why it changes when it's music, right? Like if it's okay in film That's and, interesting. and everything else, why music is it separated? Yeah. I just don't if understand it, that. If it, if it was an American band it probably wouldn't be an issue i wonder <laughs> i wonder though you know what i mean yeah the dude it's, yeah. it's foreign it's literally foreign and he can't understand it so yeah, right. I, I don't know you know what i mean because we've had there's been boy bands and, and girl bands and stuff and yeah you know, i don't know well i knew he never listened to the band because he obviously still thinks they're girls like he still he think- said there's nothing metal about this band it's like yes. <laughs> what <Yeah. laughs> like the commie band doesn't you know like come on give me a fucking it's like one of the heaviest bands in the fucking world right and at I mean, this point also they're all in their 20s so like baby yeah. metal manufacturing there was one comment that i pinned that i like this made me feel really good about putting putting this video up was he's like laugh my ass off i never listened to baby metal before so i paused the video Listen to their top song, Give Me Chocolate, on Spotify. He's like, man, this song fucks. It's pretty sick. (laughs) 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 I was like, like, hell yeah. I just created another fan. Thank you. Fucking hell. That's that's what I was going to say. It's like you shouldn't feel bad for making the video because you got to talk about what you're passionate about. It's totally relevant to your channel. Mm -hmm. And like this is, this is a, you know, Dude, I've tried explaining bandmate to people and come away feeling like, oh, okay. Like people yeah. look like, yeah. really? What is it? You know, it's it's that's a real I'm, problem though. It's like, just a close minded Some people yeah. 
it goes beyond just like the this one issue right like because like you said alan there are just so many people out there that are just embarrassed to tell people what they listen to in general and it doesn't have to have anything to do with like you know age or nationality or anything like that like some people are just i know so many guys that just won't listen to music that's produced by women they just feel yeah. like they'll be called they'll be and we came from a generation okay so i'm not i'm not gonna like when i say this i'm not saying this in the way that's to to mean it in an insulting or derogatory way but like my buddies that grew up in the age that i grew up in they'll be like dude people are gonna call me gay if i if i listen to the these girls sing or whatever. i remember that yeah wouldn't yeah. it be the opposite yeah, yeah. you, you? think so no. right <laughs> then fuck it dude yeah but they don't want to be that. bullied you know that's what it comes down yeah, to they don't yeah. want to be bullied by the other people so it's yeah. like if they think that they're going to be bullied and then the bullies think are trying to bully because they're preventing yeah. anyone from bullying them first, then it's just this repeating circle yeah. cycle of like, when are we going to be okay with what we watch? Do you know how hard for me specifically? Okay. I started my channel, my originally on K-pop specifically, I was just doing K-pop before I got into like bandmate and all that stuff. Do you know how many of my friends just looked at me with that fucking face? You know, like yeah. K-pop, dude, that's what you're, that's what you're watching now. K-pop. Yeah. And that's I was exactly like, exactly what I was. I'm a, I, and my response every time was, dude, I'm a, I'm a fucking musician. And this shit is actually well done way better than any of the shit that we're hearing on American radio right now. And you want to call me whatever the fuck you want to call me, but I know the talent difference and I'm in it for the talent. So whatever. But I know that most people are not going to be as okay with taking the hits that I was taking, you know, yeah. by being, yeah. by being public about their interests. Yeah. These and, same people oh, are listening to Taylor Swift on their iPhone speaker. hundred percent. Like it's no big deal. I understand like what like surfing the wave is saying in the comments. Like it helps not to care very much what other people think. I, and I understand that. Like for the mm -hmm. most part, I can keep it together. Like, and I've learned to not care. Trust me. This is why I don't go in my comment section anymore. But like now I just let it go off. It's just that one day is just like that moment of weakness. And then also I was like, Oh, this is a good message too. Cause I remember, like I said, I remember when Eric told me, he's like, yeah, I never told, showed anybody that I listened to Japanese music. Cause he, he was into it before I was, you know, cause of anime and stuff like that. He's like, yeah, I never shared this with anyone. Cause one time I did, I got made fun of <laughs> forever. <laughs> when you're a kid, you just stop. You're like, all right, well, I'm not, he kept yeah. listening to it. He just stopped showing people, you know? And, yeah. and you will, you'll get made fun of. It'll happen. Yeah. Oh yeah, of and, course. Of course. And that's why you need to talk about because you're creating a little community here where people who relate to this can talk about it because like you guys were all saying, a lot of people in our real lives, my real life, my friends who I love, they're great people, but they know nothing about this music scene. So they look at it, they judge it by first appearances, and they look at you weird. Because you like these bands, you're they're like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, sure, you're in into this because of the music, you know. And mm -hmm. it they're they're not bad people. They're just they're totally unaware of this whole scene. And so yeah. to to be able to create a community with talking about it, where we can actually like be like, you know, a support group for dealing with our friends that don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And it does act kind of like that sometimes. I, I I just realized how like probably fortunate I am to have like Eric who like loves the same music. So that that's definitely definitely there, you know. How many times have you guys heard? Yeah, they're, no, they're really good. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like got... oh, okay. <laughs> that 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 exact tone too. Like yeah, yeah. Like oh, they're, they're like really... <laughs> like they're they're just justifying it for you. Yeah, yeah. you're right, buddy. Yeah. Like don't worry. Yeah. Like patting you on the back. You know what I mean? Like you did a good job showing me this song. It's like, it's like but we'll hang no. this on the fridge, dude. I will say though, like okay, and I, I feel like. So this obviously goes all the way back to like when you're a kid and you're afraid of what people are going to say and it just keeps going in life. Yeah. But like the way that I ended up personally beating this was like, I think that there's a, there's a line that you have to force yourself to cross so that people don't want to make fun of you anymore because they know that you're cool with it. Right. So mm -hmm. like, I literally, like I had an Avril Lavigne shirt and I had a Britney Spears shirt when I was in high school. And I would wear both of those to school just for the sole purpose 
to make sure that those people knew that I didn't give a fuck like what they had to say about <laughs> yeah. my clothing choices or about what music I listened to. And the first time I wore that shit, they were definitely like all over my ass. Right. But yeah. the second time I wore it, they're like, well, we already did this. Man. Right? Like they didn't even want to come after me again. They were I... like, okay, we made fun of him all day long. And he still came back with it wearing, wearing it the next day. Like you took control of the situation. Yeah. yeah. I just skipped school and then go. <laughs> 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 me too. Oh I pulled up. Uh, I had a kid at a young age thing to get all my <laughs> make up all my homework. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but anyway, there's a it's it's one of those things that we got to just really, you know, you hope that eventually people will like get over this type of thing. But I don't I but don't no, see I it changing never. at all. And it seems like, you know, even today, like I go on Twitter and stuff like that and like. You know, the dudes are listening to the dudes and the girls are listening to the girls and the dudes are scared that if they listen to the girls, the, the other dudes are going to think that they're girls. And, you know, <laughs> so this whole big thing. It's a lot of insecurity, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's really what it comes down to, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Which, which is understandable, like in school, high school when they're young. But like. This guy's got to be what, in his 50s? I don't know. Right. 30s. <laughs> We, we, um, Eric and I have wrote up, uh, or we've been thinking about it. Shout out to whoever suggested this. I think it was Mike Bot 16 in our chat. He's like, you guys should do a parody of it. So we got some obnoxious sunglasses or whatnot ready to go. We're going to like just do a fucking parody of the entire thing and just be like this the entire time. All right. And then we got like this <laughs> tiny amp. I'm going to put a tiny amp behind me though and like put like the, like a toy guitar on the other side. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like the stick that they always do. They always have like, <laughs> An amp behind our guitars and the sunglasses show that they're legit. You gotta get like one of those kids' guitars, you know, uh, that you give to like a baby. Oh, oh. Yeah, we, well, I just grabbed my son's guitar. <laughs> it yeah, it's like, gotta be made of the right tone wood, or it's not gonna sound good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a Hanes like sleeveless undershirt. Mm. <laughs> Hilarious. Mm. All right. Oh. I think we killed that topic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, all we're, it, all it comes down to is just listen to whatever the fuck you want to listen to. Yeah, you know? like just just exactly. do it. Eventually, people will get over it if you just like don't try to hide it. Honestly. Yep. Agreed. All right. right all right. So a couple slackers finally watch the Yokohama Arena show. <laughs> I, I still feel bad for not watching it day of. I really do. Dude, you shouldn't yeah. feel bad. It was at four thirty in the fucking morning, bro. Like <laughs> I we know have for me, jobs that been, and life and shit. For me, that would have been two thirty. I'm really trying to get my sleep under control. If, if, I, yeah. family. I guess your health is oh, is fine to worry about. It was literally twenty four hours before Rosie went into labor. So <laughs> <laughs> you'd have done that and then had to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So oh, we uh, we uh, we talked about it a little bit. So Alan, did you guys did you watch the whole thing? Yeah. Yes. Did Wayne get to it? Yeah, I finished it. You did. All right, awesome, awesome. Um, I mean, I have a lot of notes. <laughs> Do you want to like? Oh, we we go down to the track. Do one of you want to like lead the conversation, and we can discuss like each thing, whatever. Yeah, I feel like the guy with the notes should probably lead the conversation. <laughs> Before we get into this, I got to mention there's 289 people watching and 76 likes. That's some bullshit. Oof. That's how bad God, this podcast is. Not okay, let's talk third. about Taylor <laughs> Swift until it gets up to 100. <laughs> is Sorry, that what, wait, is that what got the likes up or down? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what direction they go now that I insulted everybody. <laughs> Wave is going to do the kazoo until we get 200 likes. <laughs> until we get <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Play, play, shake it off with the kazoo. <laughs> Uh, how the heck does that you're not kazooing right hey hey, hey, that again i I think there's something stuck in the wax paper (laughs) tell us more okay okay, hold on i don't want you to choke bro so tell us more about the wax paper (laughs) the likes are going up we can move on (laughs) well real quick i want to mention uh Orange just re- is going to be premiering uh, the Yokohama fan cam of Choose Me. Oh, cool. Awesome. So that'll be going up. That's <laughs> Speaking of insecurity, do you like us? <laughs> what? The poll That's we what put. The poll says. <laughs> oh, was, I just said yes. And I didn't even read what it said. <laughs> 
Wow. Oh, oh man, I didn't four percent even... said no. <laughs> oh, wow! Wow! Oh, my well, thanks for the views anyway. <laughs> yeah, it seems like you're really wasting your time. <laughs> That's the case. Awesome if that said that in the poll. <laughs> Speaking of insecurities, please make us. <laughs> Seize the day wants to change his vote. Now they didn't no. know what we were saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you have committed, man. You like us. You really like us. <laughs> I want to know why fifteen percent said no. Fifteen <laughs> now? Oh, okay. Damn, it's going up. <laughs> <laughs> oh All right. man! All right. What were we talking yeah, about? We're gonna talk Man-made. about Bandmade. Bandmade. All right. The domination is the first song, which uh was the song that they ended a lot and with the tour that we watched, right? They they ended their concerts. Yeah. With- so it was interesting to see that start off and like kick off with that as the beginning song. Yeah, that was kind of like the switch that they made this year. They like it stopped ending the the shows with Domination and started starting them with. Yeah, you want to say anything about Domination Wave? Or keep going. It was freaking killer. I wish <laughs> I, I watched it last week, so I'm like trying to remember the details without thinking yeah. of my notes. But I mean, I've seen Domination so many times, it wasn't like a huge standout for me. Yeah, same for me. I just realized they opened with it, which I thought was badass instead. But leading into Glory, Glory was really cool because something that was different about it was Miku's vocal lines. She changed them up a little bit, put a little bit of aggression to it. She had like a little rasp going on when she called out in the, some of the backing vocals in there, which I thought was pretty cool um, during it. I didn't realize the mix was a little weird in the first two songs. And then going into Alone, it stabilized. All of a sudden, everything was like done really well, which yeah, was they, awesome to see. It was yeah, like eventually they got it sorted out. Yeah. Sorted really good. That's so yeah, cool and- that they <clears throat> were doing live mixing and nailed it so well, like close to the beginning of the concert. Yeah. And the reason why I mentioned this is I just like to sh- shine a little light on mixed sound engineers because they're the unsung heroes of these shows. It's a lot of fucking pressure, guys, <laughs> especially doing Yokohama Arena and you're being live streamed yeah. in front of thousands of fans, thousands of people there. That's a lot of pressure. Literally um, creating a permanent record of everything that's happening yeah. instantly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, Eric and I were mentioning during our reaction to it, we we're like, we, there was a, there was a show that happened in the U S where a sound guy completely botched the entire show. And we, I was talking with the sound engineer that I was on tour with. And we were like, dude, we don't even, we would be so embarrassed if that was on our record. <laughs> like imagine you like mess that up. It's permanently there forever. Everybody's, right. gonna know, you know, um, play. Uh, I, I don't know why I wrote this, but play was really good. Also. I didn't have anything um, special in there. I don't know what my notes mean on this one. I guess I need to be better at writing notes, but what time of day was it? I read it anyway. My <laughs> unleash because it makes no sense what I wrote. So I'm not going to like, I want to hear it. It's like, not, it's like, didn't record live. Oh, I remember now. I know what the note means. I thought my only gripe with this was, I couldn't hear the audience. I wish they had oh, some yeah, yeah, yeah. on the audience because the gate and the compressor like drowned them out, which makes sense. And that's just more of a reason why you should go see them live. This is why I have to see them live. If you couldn't, I understand a lot of us couldn't see this one live. So it's, we were fortunate enough to be able to see a recorded version of it. But one thing that really took me out of the element was not hearing the audience. And I wish for some of these concerts that they like figure something out for that maybe like turn on the mic when the song's over so you can feel feel the atmosphere they do that with like comedy stand-ups right i think yeah. it'd be to introduce that in the concerts i mean My- they did have room mics for because there was like some stereo audience chatter during the quiet parts that i heard yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I think they turned it up for like the quieter parts and stuff like oh. that, but still very low. You know what I mean? Like when you're there, you feel it, you know? And uh, I've seen some yeah. people like, capture it, but I think that's a new concept that's just starting to catch on. So True. it'd be cool to see that. Um, But by the time Unleash happened, it was perfect. Fucking sound was flawless. We're like kicking ass. I thought the girls warmed up by Unleash. Like the first four were great, but when <laughs> Unleash hit, they came out ripping. Like, and I love the extra grit that you heard on Psyche's voice that yes. came in. Um, Miku was louder. Pronunciation of the English words in Unleashed were way better than the recorded version, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, it just opened up the concert. That, Like, at that point, I was like, 
let's go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I said this last week, but Psyche's now we go was like yeah. so freaking epic. She's she nailed that line so well. Which hell yeah. For live, live streamed, that's just really cool to see you when they absolutely nail a vocal line that's- like that. That's the best I've ever heard her sing that song. It was absolutely flawless. Uh, better than the recorded version, I think. Like, I would love, uh, man, she like killed it. You could tell like she's uh, working on her uh, pronunciation of English words and stuff like that. And just like projecting in general just was really good. And I really like the character that was added on to her voice. And um, I, I just hope it keeps happening like that. It's so cool to see somebody still improving. Like we were just talking about earlier, like, see what I mean? Artists. Like some artists still keep working on their craft, even when they're so they're already so amazing. Um, oh, Thrill I'm never bro- stop learning. Yeah, never stop. Thrill came on, and holy shit! Also, another song that I thought was the best version of it I've ever heard. Um, a lot of extra character in Psyche's voice. Hybrid picking on the bass instead of full on slap picking for the bass solo, which I thought was awesome. Oh. Like she uses a pick and slap because in the original recording it's just slap bass. So on this one you had the hybrid picking going on. So she's using pick and then uh, doing a little slapping on it. And I that thought is that... ba. <laughs> <laughs> she's was... improving her style for songs she's played a million times. That's crazy. Yeah, exactly. And that, uh, that's exactly what I was gonna say. I was just like, wow. It was just re- it was fucking phenomenal. Harmony sounded spectacular during it. I love like Miku solo when she starts singing, going back to that original way they did the song. It was it was awesome. Heck yeah. Um Shambles um <laughs> did the effects on her voice, which I thought was interesting. So they left the effects on her voice, which was triggered by MIDI. So normally what you would do in that situation is um I did this on tour just recently where we would have a source file that plays through the track because the backing tracks were on point the entire night. Like, you know, on other concerts we've seen, they kind of went out and stuff. So it was really cool to see that they had like the effects also, which I think adds to the performance. And um I don't know why I, it's obviously this is a big arena, so they want to make sure everything's perfect and like just special. But it was really cool that they added that little distortion on her voice and stuff. Yes. I thought it was really cool. Um, because in like other, I think the other shambles version, they just kept it clean, which was awesome too. That was like a different way of hearing it. Yeah. Mm. By the way, you guys can stop me at any time. You guys just want to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, I agree. We, we we give a lot of our uh, thoughts last week, so that's kind of <laughs> your section this week. Uh, yeah, Wave, Wave's um, gonna Wave's gonna have more later, right? Because Wave, you watched the second half, did you? Yeah, yeah. What? Okay, cool. Um, don't you tell me. I really liked the, a lot. Different lead, extended bridge, back and forth again with a guitar and bass, which is ended up being the theme for the entire night. It was a lot of oh. duel between guitar and yes. bass. Uh, which was awesome. Afterlife, sense, phenomenal. Influencer, I thought was in, uh, the intro. Interesting intro. That was the one with a different intro, right? Yeah, the- I had Miku do There's something, seven. right? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, that- what, did, what, what was the? What did she do? She did something. It was like a Miku intro. I'm yeah, freaking it was like jamming away, dude. Solo. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right. She's jamming away, and then they had a middle chord change on one part, but I don't know if that was intentional or not. But it worked. It sounded good. <laughs> I was like, all right, that was cool. That, that's the thing about live. I noticed something that I've never heard before. I think Misa might have played a wrong note, but she was like running around the entire arena. You can so, see it in her face, dude. She's yeah. like, show me <laughs> that. <laughs> Holy fuck. I've never I seen saw, her fuck up at that, all. It I was during a Choose Me, the it's second like, oh Choose Me, I think, oh, when they were I running around. It. I yeah. missed that. She immediately was like, oh, "Crap!" But I love going, dude. It funny I love well. that one that wrong happens. note in forty songs, bro. That's what I'm <laughs> right. saying. I love that that happens so rarely that it's it, that instead of it being like a negative thing, it's like a total positive for us. It's like, yes, we found gold. <laughs> she fucked up. I know. I know. It's so <laughs> authentic. <laughs> She's so authentically perfect. <laughs> We're like, we found it, and then from from now on was killer. At- as always, they have that song so down. We got the catwalk from Akane, walked down the middle of the stage. I thought that was interesting, too, at the beginning of the concert. They didn't really use the rest of the stage. And in my head, I was thinking maybe they were thinking they're so used to playing shows with a smaller stage that they're like, oh, yeah, we have a whole thing we can walk out to. <laughs> because 
finally after that point they start walking out on the front stage but that could have been just plan maybe they just wanted to like get in the feel of things and they, yeah. you could just see him opening up as uh went on uh daydreaming solo lead in the beginning was absolutely beautiful sounding uh, i loved it mm. it was great um uh and at this point of the concert i had asked myself like how long do you guys think they prepare with this set list because it's a 32 like a 32 song set list right or 33 32 33 uh, i think 32 yeah 32, 32. song set list i mean uh, eric and i were <laughs> talking about this we we're like how much prep did they do for this because this must have been hours and hours of work because you have all these new leads new solos new yeah. extra things happening what do you guys Dude, think when yeah. they're running around they're running around the arena like trying to you can see him like shit i gotta hurry like running back to get to the stage like they had to go through that stuff okay it's gonna be so long we can go out and head yeah out and, and what well, misa was running back because she was playing and then she had to like stop and just have a groove moment because <laughs> she like slid back yeah. down the neck or something like stopped and then just kept going it was just kind of it was neat seeing them <laughs> i mean mm -hmm. konami's like running back to the stage as he's playing a lead for one of the songs i can't remember what was going on but, yeah like, hurry get back Get back to the stage. This is not a. Uh, this is not something you could swing. To. I from whenever they found out they were playing this place, I'm pretty sure they've been setting this up as time has been going on, like yeah. months and months, because this thing is just it's so it's it's so catered exactly to what they needed it to be here with like the like you said the different versions, but also the breaks where they are, what they're going to be doing during the yeah. breaks, even like the choreo to an extent of using the stage in new ways this time. I mean Yeah, they it's probably been like here's a set for tomorrow. Here's what we got so far so you for Yokohama. Like oh yeah, yeah part of their daily. working on it. You know, oh this this was great tonight. Let's do that there. You know, I imagine they had to be kinda... on top of writing and recording their new album yeah. <laughs> like what the yeah. crap yeah it, wow. and just like i just want to tell people like doing the stage stuff is a lot of stuff you got to prepare for i mean even in my small setting with the dicotic we we practice some things for stage stuff but it's a lot of work just for a six song set and we're like all right guys we gotta make sure to sync up on this part let's do this yeah. you know because um that does get practiced you know it, Sometimes it happens naturally. You take those wins when you can, when it just happens like organically, you're like, fuck yeah. But what you normally do is you plan like little segments in between the songs and then everything else organically happens. And sometimes you like discover things when you're live, which is really fun. So I, I would just be so curious to see what the rehearsal was for this concert because it's a three hour and 43 minute concert. <laughs> Bro, do you think they rehearsed the whole thing all at once? Like the oh, day before? Man. They probably didn't actually play through the songs, right? Maybe like, maybe the know. intros like hit the stuff with the intros and different middle parts and then everything else they're probably caught. We know this one. Yeah. yeah. That's know. what I think too, Ryan. I think that's probably what happened. They probably the ones they added new stuff on they rehearsed. Yeah. But you know what or the concern is like around. staying on time, right? Like if you have like a certain amount of time, like you don't know exactly how long it's all going to last unless you actually do yeah, it all it at once. True. Yeah. Because they did have backing tracks and click tracks. So it's like, yeah. shit, that's a lot of that's a lot of work, guys. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure they have, like, yeah. Ryan, didn't you say they have, like, very specific cutoffs in Japan for, like, when they have to shut things down? Was that you that said that? Somebody had told uh, me that recently. I am, if I did say it, it was a while ago. But, I mean, it seems like it because I know, well, I don't know, even shows here, if it started late, they still cut off the time you're supposed to cut off. They didn't, like, push anything back. I don't know if that's... A thing, an ethical thing with them, or if it's just, I don't know about Japan, right? Well, either way, I, I'm I'm assuming they had like a, an allotted amount of time, and they had to know exactly like when they were going to finish it yeah. and have it down pat. I don't know how you do that without actually running through the whole fucking thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess if if it's two o'clock and it's around the same time as what's you know what the recording is, then you should you have an idea of what it's going to be, barring any any mishaps or whatever yeah yep um so we get to daydreaming and all i'm gonna say is uh ah, bandmate are is not nice they were not nice to us after daydreaming because <laughs> we did daydreaming memorable and about us so what was that about were they trying to make <laughs> the entire crowd cry yes yes, yes. 30 yes. minutes straight because 100%. that was awful it i one of those people it I was wasn't awful like, it was beautiful it was beautiful, but at the time, like, I don't want to cry anymore. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done being emotional. <laughs> like, 
they did though right they, out they it was an interesting instead of like spreading these out they were just like okay we're gonna hit them as hard as we yeah. possibly can with the emotions now and then and then just let them go crazy after that i by the time we got the bout us i was just like i was completely dry like my i had so much caffeine too so i'm like the hype <laughs> at the same time oh like, no and, like like you could see like the streamline like dried into my face like on the <laughs> I'm like jesus <laughs> tears of coffee I, i'll talk about what went into this how much they put into it how special it is and they're still like well we didn't do everything we wanted to look we'll to give you another concert oh my god yes <laughs> this band yeah. is just so it's yeah. just so they're too good too good for us too 33 us. songs dude like yeah. um yeah that's insane then they come out with mirage which i completely forgot about that song because i haven't heard that song in so long yeah. for me, me too. Felt, for me that felt like a brand new song dude i know on the, on the stream people in the chat are like what is this oh oh <laughs> like, they're, they're just i haven't gotten to all the bandmate songs that's the thing about this band if you do get into them and you've been listening to an album for a while like if you want to listen to new stuff you can they have such a huge catalog you know <laughs> that happened to me with uh forward at the end I was yeah. like, is this another new song? What <laughs> happened to me with both of those and <laughs> Magi or Magi or whatever that song is? Maggie. I didn't know that one either. Yeah, that is actually new though. Yeah, it's new oh, song. that makes that makes sense. Though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one they played it on tour a couple times, but that's it's not officially out. Yeah, they didn't play Go Easy, their other new song. Yeah, that one I still haven't heard. Yeah, yet. maybe that's, that's on part two, two spinoff show. Maybe yeah. does it even does it, has it. Is there even a recording of that floating around? No, right? There's nothing on that. Not officially. Not if, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, or not even on their um paid membership thing. They haven't released it for members. Mm-hmm. Nope. I'm surprised. Um, then we got Bubble coming in after that. And I didn't write any notes for that. If you have anything to say, wave about bubble. Ah, I think it was just bubble. It was very solid. Uh, uh, I was just grooving with it because it's one of the songs we did the bandmate community cover with. And it's mm. just like such a great groove. I was a, I was thinking of Bjorn's Van Michael version of it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> heck yeah. And we got Rock and Me. Miku doesn't play guitar during this, and she walks around the stage. This is like when a lot of that walking around happens, and that glorious picture that I just showed you guys. I'm so happy. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, yes. Uh, Bring it up. Picture. I can't wait to put it in a thumbnail. If you guys are listening from Spotify, if you guys didn't know, we used to you can check this out on Spotify if you're working and stuff. Uh, um, here, let me pull it up. I should have put it in the Discord. Yeah, look at this glorious picture. Well, well <laughs> that is so classic. <laughs> it's a yeah, great picture. So good. But while you mentioned our mentioning Spotify, I just gotta say our Spotify wrapped is awesome. And we saw you guys out there putting a bunch of you put us in top five, bunch of you put us in top three, and a lot of you had us as a number one. And that's really cool. So I couldn't really believe cool. that, dude. Thank you. I didn't know people actually listened on Spotify. I thought we were just Pretty much YouTube. That's yeah, awesome. no, a lot. Ninety-two percent uptick on Spotify listens compared to last year. It was wow. pretty crazy. Like the numbers were like it, yeah. start, it was just a crazy difference from last year. But yeah, there was like hundreds of people that put us in their top five. So that was really cool, guys. We were, Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we appreciate you. it, guys. And we have cool. a lot of we're doing extra podcasts too now. So look out, we got Peter Lynn. We're gonna talk about this concert also coming out tomorrow. Oh, sweet. So, I also think we were rated a, a 4.9 out of five, which was, Oh yeah. Leave again, us a rating. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Dude, yeah. that's wild. <clears throat> so thank you. We got, we got rock and me, and then we get the acoustic session, which I would say <laughs> is my favorite moment of the entire concert. That was the best. I love psyche and acoustic. Just something about the, that pairing is phenomenal. Is my favorite way to listen to Psyche sing over music. I just enjoy that so much more. Uh, what do you guys think? Yes. Especially <laughs> when Konami's doing the backing vocals. Yeah. Yeah, I love it, dude. But when when she walked back and sat down at the piano, dude. Mm-hmm. I was like, what? And then she gave everybody, she gave this look like, oh, yeah, you thought you knew it was going to happen, but. <laughs> yeah. I was like, dude, we're like, so she's like, cool. I bet you thought Kadabi was gonna sit here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, not, not today. Oh, so, so dude, amazing. honestly, nailed it. I love all their acoustic stuff, and I'm I'm really happy when they decide to throw a couple in there. Yeah. Only the only problem for me personally on this one was that like different is quite possibly my favorite bandmate song. 
So like that's the one of the only three that I would prefer that they played the regular version, and that was one of the ones that they chose to do in the acoustic. I would have yeah. taken like literally any other song on the set list and wanted that to be acoustic. Even Chemical Reaction acoustic? Hell yeah, that would make it so much better. Oh my god. <laughs> but but yeah, but oh. even the even the different version is is awesome. I love the acoustic version of different. I just love different, that guitar different. riff, man. I love the guitar riff in the beginning. And I want to hear yeah. it. Yeah. They just need to make different a little different. Yeah. There I'm you sorry. Go. I'm already think... starting dad jokes. <laughs> you had it in yeah. you for the it's only been forever. it's only been a week, <laughs> Wave. <laughs> I I forgot to do the Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That would have been perfect. Next time. You got a oh, long time to prepare. Something that I really I know Konami does backup vocals but I really liked how it sounded on this one probably the best I thought that I've heard of the soft vocal harmonies the perfect amount of pressure the way that she vocalized those harmonies underneath Psyche I thought sounded really good especially on an enemy um I thought it was amazing and so soft spoken too like she she has these really interesting harmonic intervals but she doesn't push them very hard they're just like so subtle underneath Psyche yeah and like Ryan just said, we had Choose Me afterwards, which I thought was just as good. It just as good as the acoustic stuff. Like I said, that segment was my favorite part. It really was. I, I really enjoyed that. It's Maybe it's just something different from what we were hearing for the past you know, hour. And then when that part came in, I was just like, wow, this is so good. I didn't want it to stop. I was like, can we just do the whole Christmas album? Let's just... <laughs> <laughs> in the middle make it a 40 song set it's no big I mean, deal just tack on four hours to the concert and i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure people's bladders can handle it in the crowd they'd have a morning show let's all break have some lunch come back and we'll just do the whole 160 <laughs> songs or whatever it is and uh, uh just drop the discography in order let's do it yeah <laughs> i mean you know like, what they would do they would play 12 different shows and play a different disc yeah. different album at each show just to like that'd be sick i'm actually be horrible you would miss dude they'll so they'll they'll shit. definitely do that though like eventually like when they were like okay we don't feel like fucking making another album this year they'll go on <laughs> tour and they'll play full albums i'm sure of it like, i've seen other <laughs> bands do it and they're way more creative than the other bands i've seen choose to do dude, that. yeah some bands yeah. are able to do that when they only have one good song so <laughs> just because people are only there for that one song that's yeah. why they have yeah. to do that i saw yellow like... i saw yellow card do their album you guys remember yellow card no do well, really? i remember yeah. the name they did that song where it was like uh hit, that's it sing it alan I, I, sing, sing the yellow card i song. remember the hit but i don't know how, how... <laughs> we were both 16 and it felt so oh, yeah, that's right and yeah. it was the, it was the punk band with the violin in it Anyway, yeah. I saw them live and they literally went on a full year tour where they just played. It was like 10 years after they just played the, the that one album and they played it in a different style every t- show that they went and <laughs> played. And I was that's... like, yeah, well, that makes sense. That's how you do it, right? Like, that's how you keep it up. Yep. Keep making money off that one song. Um, After Choose Me, we got on set. They started using the riser, which was badass for the yeah. TV screen that came up. Um, We had, uh, by the way, we're mentioning all this stuff for those that haven't watched the concert yet. I think you can still get it right. You can still go on their yeah. site and watch this concert. So Long if, the, if you didn't see it and this is motivating you to go watch it, go, go pay for it. How much is it? I'm not sure how much it is, but it is on their website. Uh, 40, 40 bucks. Something like I'll that. find the link and pop it in the chat. 40 bucks for four hours. I think that's worth it. That you could rewatch hundreds of times and it'll still be interesting. Right. So, after that, I finally get to hear one of the new songs. I mean, I guess Memorable is technically a new song, but I get to hear one of the new songs that they put been playing at these recent shows, which was Brightest Star. I'm still undecided like if I absolutely love the song, but there's a lot of moments in the song that I was happy with, that I was surprised with. It was so cool to see the dual guitar solo come out of nowhere because that made me more excited for what's to come. Maybe this is the next evolution of Bandmade. Maybe we're going to get more dual stuff, which would be awesome because um, we were just talking with Peter on a recent podcast with MNN, and we were actually discussing this. Hey, I wonder what else they're going to do now that they kind of like tease like this harmony solo for the brightest star. Are they going to start doing more things like that maybe live? Because that will open up things. That would be cool to see, in my yes. opinion. Yeah, that was I think one of my favorite moments. It's like this is another level up for them, you know. 
Yeah, definitely. I think this is what triggered the conversation last week that we had about um, if Miku is ever going to record any of the the parts on the albums, right? Because I because I thought that was so cool too that like she was she got so much more activity going with her guitar on on this show more than I've ever seen before. And I just feel like that it we're just even, keep leveling up. Even if Konami keeps recording all the parts, which is totally okay to me, the fact that Miku is now playing more means yeah. that she's able to do more so meaning konami is going to feel more comfortable to write more complex things maybe mm. as a rhythm mm -hmm. section keep Definitely. pushing her a little bit harder and they, yep. yeah it's going to push her harder and she's going to do more things and they can separate great. more too right like they yeah. they don't have to play the same thing as often not that they do that a lot anyway but yeah. like Hardly. you know originally that's what they were doing for in the beginning albums quite a bit like miku was kind of following with a lot of the root node type of things they're doing <laughs> now miku just just go off and play their own stuff yeah yep absolutely uh what do you what did you guys have any thoughts on that right at star yeah i think it's my favorite of the new songs so far yeah i agree same same for me actually um freedom oh go oh, ahead Ryan. Ryan. sorry my bad, I was my bad. Say, it, it was delight delightfully you know a miku song and i love that about it yeah it's just, oh, a, it, it, you know, I think it's just a cool thing that it doesn't. I mean, she has her songs that she fronts, and it's clear that she loves doing it, you know. And it was just yeah. uh, a different, just a different uh, feel, and I, I just like it, man. I don't know. What makes it different too is uh, she uses her lower register in the song, where and these yeah. like two before that were was her higher register. So I thought that was interesting that she went back to that. I know there's a song earlier where she does a lower register. Um, so it was interesting to hear her do the lower one. Yeah, that's smart writing because like, you know, it gets hard to sing those higher register songs one after the other. Sure. Like Sayanakadori seems so difficult to sing. So yeah, and she's singing most of the damn time anyway too you know she's always doing backups yeah true yep. um freedom we got with a different uh cool intro in the beginning um oh yeah it was yeah. awesome was i it, loved it was that was the like, one where misa took a bass solo or... no this was the one no this was the one oh, where that's it, first where it was like nice. a, this was this was like a whole new part. It was like it sounded like they played for like a minute. It sounded like it was going to be like its own song, like something that we had never heard before. Right. And then, yeah. and then they started playing Freedom. Yes. And d Alan, did you feel like Konami's guitar riff in this live version felt a little like a little uh, bluesier than the original? Yeah, it felt more feelsy. Was this when she pulled? I don't know if I wrote it down. I think this was the one where she pulled out the one I always say looks like the Carlos Santana guitar. I believe this was it, right? Oh, I I don't remember what guitar she was. Uh, she it kind of looks like it. it. Well, Carlos Santana also does um yeah, the the PRS as in the same color. It was like the same color scheme. I don't oh, know why. Right, like, like the like the orangish, like a star, uh, sunburst one. Or she had like a it's like green. One? It's the lime oh, the green, green one. one. Yeah, I think it was on this song, if I'm not mistaken. And yes, I do feel like that. It was way more bluesy, way more Fine. feel. I think that this is the song. I don't know why I didn't write it down, um, but it, um, but yeah. Ah. Um. And then, after that, we got the drum solo with Black Hole that came in. It's like the 25th, track twenty five, which was fucking awesome. Yeah, we we talked about this a lot last week, but yep, that solo the, was cool. Eh? The way Akane was able to do such a cool solo, not only cool, impressive technique wise but also like funny to watch the way she just stopped playing and looked around <laughs> and that just went back at it but then the stamina it takes to play that solo and then go straight into friggin black hole not giving her muscles like any time to to like read you know to rest between those two things it was absolutely insane to me because you yeah. know like drummers when you're playing crazy high intensity like that you do get tired well yep. i do but uh anyways <laughs> it was really cool <laughs> like you would expect it would have been nice for her to go into like a slower song like maybe like a thrill or something like yeah. that afterwards right but no no, no I was just like i'll do my drum solo and then play the fastest song we have why not well, well and speaking of that the pacing of like them like talking to the crowd and like taking those little moments of breaks i think were perfectly planned you know where you have members leaving because you 
you have the moment where it's just psyche and acoustic, you know, psyche and Konami, Konami, and then psyche by herself. So you have like, they have these rest periods, like kind of like just sprinkled throughout perfectly. And I think for them, the probably that three hours went by super fast. Yeah. I assume that um, the, like the, the breaks that they take also, they probably have like pretty specific things that they know that they're going to talk about. Right. Like, I don't think it's like word for word, like they have a written down script, but I think they have like, you know, notes. This is we're going to talk about this for two minutes. We're going to talk about this for two minutes, blah, 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 type of thing. Yeah. Heck yeah. And then Misa solo before Dice, I think, is what you were talking about. Wade. Yes. OK, yeah. Dice makes a lot more sense. <laughs> yep. Yeah, the change up and the back and forth of the riff. What that was really freaking cool. And like I said, Konami and <laughs> Misa were like doing a lot of dual battles during during this. Yes. Which was really cool. I thought it was cool, um, though, that like Misa, I've. I don't think I've seen it before where Misa does a bass solo with nothing else, no drums or anything. It was yeah. just bass. That was pretty cool. And the way they, th Eric and I had to like do a double take. So I'm sitting there like, I'm writing these notes down, right? I'm like watching. And all of a sudden I hear, I hear hate out of nowhere start. I'm like, wait, I thought we were listening to the dice. <laughs> 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 i don't know what i was thinking because like i was like i was like oh i gotta write down what i saw from brightest star i'm like put it down listen so to like it. miss dice you're still on <laughs> brightest star during <laughs> no i'm just saying like i'm on one of these i think i'm writing about the drum solo in black hole i can't remember what i was doing i remember just writing and it's like what the fuck just happened <laughs> look at the way that they transition the hate completely Please. threw me off I was like, what's going on i had to rewind it a little bit I thought that was awesome how they combined those. Um, then we had good no god, which was a different intro, right? I was like tripping out. That was a yeah the intro. Yeah. Yep. Before that, um, it just I just remember that because they had an intro in the U.S. when they did the one that uh, we all went to a lot of the shows for. That was a different one then. So again, it was just bass and drums, right? I think the no god intro. No, they had guitars. I think that one too. Oh, okay. There yeah, was they, definitely a part. There was a part where <clears throat> there was a part where it was just bass and drums. I think for just a few seconds, though. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um, so then we get to the other new song. This one is still undecided. When I first heard it, as Maggie, I hope I'm saying that right. First time I heard it, I was uh, kind of nah, just like lukewarm on it. I listened to it again. Really liked the riffage a lot. I'm still like, ah, uh, I don't know. To me, it sounds like a a blend of a lot of other bandmate songs, which makes sense, obviously, because it's bandmate. So I don't know. I. It sounds like just like a good song, but I haven't listened to it enough to really be like, oh, I absolutely love it. I definitely like Bright Star more. It could be biased because it's me, because uh, it's uh, Miku singing. But I don't know. It's just something about that one didn't resonate with me as much. But I'm sure if I listen to it again, that's the one where the dancing chorus or whatnot in it. I was just curious what you guys thought about that song. I think uh, yeah. reactions to it when uh, they're um. Well, with like hate and and balance and all those, that EP came out. There's a lot of people that are like, I don't know about that song. I think it's just because it's it's bandmate doing something different, you know, like mm. like a lot different than what you're used to. So yeah, it it is off not off putting, but you're like, I, I don't know, because you you expect it here or you want to hear certain things, and yeah. it's like that every time something different. I'm always feel the same way. It's like, gosh, I don't, you know, I don't know, but but it's like, well. Part of me is like, well, they they didn't do this by accident, you know. So I, <laughs> yeah. I, I listen to it that way, like, what are they what are they trying to get across or whatever? And I don't know. I think uh, you'll you'll come around like everybody does with everything. <laughs> yeah. Do you, think it, do you think it was more like to be like a fun song because it was like you know the, what were the lyrics again? Like everybody dancing something like it was supposed to meant to be more maybe yeah. along those lines. It did feel like oh, that and. Yeah, I thought the backing vocals were really cool in that song. The way yeah, I I have to listen it's to it like again. It's like really catchy. Once. But yeah, that's like thirty three songs, and you hear new songs. It's so, it's like <laughs> I can't wait to just go back and listen to each new song, yeah. each song over yeah. again, just by itself, and pick it apart more. For sure. Yeah. Then we then choose me came back. You know they did the band version. I was not expecting them to do that right afterwards um then we went into forward with a new instrumental love the new feel to forward i thought it felt very different than the studio version and i really enjoyed the hell out of it um i, I was thought, like what is this i can't believe you even remember the studio <laughs> version 
Yeah, I couldn't either because I didn't remember uh, <laughs> what song I didn't remember. I didn't remember Mirage. <laughs> that one was like, wait, what? I I recognized it when it got to the chorus, you know. Um, I think for Mirage and for uh, no forward, maybe I was primed up because of the acoustic song, but no, not the acoustic song. Sorry, when they yeah yeah the acoustic one. Did they play no, an acoustic? One? I don't think so. No, I'm tripping. I'm I'm mixing it up. The acoustic. You tripping, son. I, mean, I just remembered it from listening to the album. I don't know what I'm saying. Why did I write that? I don't know, I dude. I don't I'm know. I'm gonna pee I really bad, <laughs> but I don't want to miss this conversation. <laughs> um, and then endless story, oh, which was I thought was oh, couldn't think of a better song to end the the concert with. On it, honestly, did we skip manners? Yeah, yeah, yeah manners was, was manners. and and the second choose me, but yeah. Endless story. Yeah, they did do "Choose Me" earlier. Then what, they did "Choose I... Me" twice. They did the uh, they did yeah, the piano with the, music. with the piano. The piano. First. Yes. Sorry. Oh, that's what that's you were what talking I about. I, I was thought like, you said forward. <laughs> Wait, what the fuck? I don't. We're just gonna stop. <laughs> what <laughs> notes? Uh, we, Get those notes out of we've here. We've solved the mystery. Don't worry. No, <laughs> it was cool. They did it again. That's when they they let people. They told everybody in the audience, "Hey, you can bring out your phones and you can take video during this shoot." And they did that during "Choose Me." So. Dude, they yeah. did play forward on the Christmas acoustic. That's what people are saying. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't yeah they fucking remember they that. did. Because I looked it up, and I was like, "What? That was on the online acoustic." Holy shit! What the hell, man? That feels like a different age. Yeah, because that wow. was like one of my favorites from that. But What's anyway, it? that's why you remembered it then. Okay. Yeah, I was like, yeah, because I'm, <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, guys, I really tried for this concert to write notes so I could say it because I always hate it. I always like do a review in these concerts, never have a. I always forget yeah, everything, and I really job. Have to remember everything. So. Hopefully, uh, you guys enjoyed that review, and the people that haven't watched it, hopefully, it pumps you up to go watch it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed so. it, Alan. Thank you yes. for that. Only also, now I got to go back and listen to forward acoustic version on the. Like, I literally have no recollection of that. For, I remember every other song on that album. On that album, I don't remember this one. Yeah, I definitely got to go back and get a closer look to these things. I I put yeah. I put my reaction up there, and people actually a lot of people are watching it, man, and. It's really cool to see, like, oh, you know, like watching it along with you and stuff. And, but yeah, a lot of that stuff was the the intros, the the battles, and the new songs. It's the only time I've listened to it, so I gotta get back to it. Maybe do a, a deeper look at some of the things, learn some parts or something. It's fun to do. Hell yeah, hell what yeah! A treat. What a treat! What a treat! I mean, this is honestly unheard of to me. Like, I, I I'm sure that this has happened before, but I, I have. No knowledge of a band that I like playing an almost four hour set with 33 songs on it and like a bunch of skits and like shit like that. Like this just never yeah. happened with any band I've ever seen before. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was so epic, like just the culmination of this, not only their 10 years together, but also this past year where they've been touring the world. And, you know, the whole tour was the 10th anniversary tour, but this is the final show until part two <laughs> but it's just like so epic during endless story the end of endless story when they're all crying and walking around and taking it in and psyche was crying which i can't remember seeing that before but oh when her voice was... broke up at the end of the concert dude and she's trying to say goodbye uh, and i was like <laughs> I know. Was oh god that's it uh, like you're the tough one what the hell it, what am i supposed to do now another just... real go ahead it just made me think about like all the stuff that they've gone through to get to this point. Not only their massive career of writing great music, the insane amount of music they've created over this past 10 years, but also making it through, you know, the COVID times, continuing to create and stay together as a band and still find a way to improve, even though that was such a discouraging time uh, where a lot of bands fell apart and lost motivation, but they they wrote about it, they turned into art, and then they got stronger, and it all culminated in this giant, epic concert. This was so yes. cool. Another memorable moment, too, in this was them reacting to them in back in the day. That was really yeah. cool. That oh, was yes! Awesome. That was another cry moment, for sure, 100%. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> Miku just cringing at herself. During a night times from the past. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm like, I'm and glad it, I'm not the only one that hates watching myself. 
the fact that Psyche knew about it and nobody else did, so she knew it was coming. Oh was yeah. <laughs> I like how they were just torturing Miku with it. She's like, why don't they stop? And they just kept joking. <laughs> you know what? You know what I was like baffled about is how much I understood what they were saying during the talking parts. I, I, remember, I was looking at Eric, I'm like, why do I understand what they're saying? <laughs> but I don't really. You know what I mean? Like, well, because wow, you're human. <laughs> Bro, that yeah. it's so funny that you said that. Because <laughs> I literally said the same thing. Like, like literally I... the exact same thing. I was like, I was watching this. I don't speak Japanese, but I knew what they were talking about. Like, I know. Uh, yeah. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> That's fucking funny. Great. Uh, uh <laughs> Molly Crew mentioned uh there's actually a video of Psyche playing piano on YouTube and people are reacting to it. Guys, this is something that you know, this is a the band reaching out to everybody to to give them a special thing, and you know, it's paid for. So if you see those. It's not cool, man. They're, they're, yeah. Yeah. It's not cool at all. That's p- pirated shit. And, you know, I know people, people save a lot of stuff and that's fine. If you pay for it, you save it. That's one thing. If you, if you're sharing it, I mean, they're going to get caught eventually. It's funny because if I put it up, I'd have been like immediately freaking blocked. I'm sure somehow these things get on channels and they get left up there. And, you know, yeah. I don't know, man. The people that have them know they're not supposed to be watching them. And, yeah, I'd say yeah. I'd say the band is I mean, still they're... selling yeah. tickets to the concert. I have definitely the... been guilty of messing up in the past of like, you know, posting on Patreon these concert reactions. And that's why I didn't do it this time around. If you guys were wondering, I felt guilty about that. So that's why I took those down. Um, so, but, you know, I just, it, I, to me, it's just not, not a good, th- not a good thing to do. Let the band sell their stuff first, you know? And then just do a review about it, like we just did right now. Yeah. We can just talk about yeah. it. After. Yeah, I'm excited. I don't know about you guys. I think, Ryan, you mentioned this, but I kind of want to go back to each individual song and just do another review, pick it apart. and Because there's so many details in each song performance that it's just like impossible to remember without going back and going through it. A little bit at a time you know? bro when that blu-ray comes out for this concert like totally mm-hmm. that's when that's when every song's get broken down to we're gonna have 33 fucking reaction videos each <laughs> on that <Yeah>. album. <laughs> yeah. sweet yeah it's gonna be crazy yeah motley crew is also saying you know part of the issue is some of the they're being praised by other bandmate fans i mean let them do what they want to do i mean the the, the fans karma's, want karma's a thing the fans Carmen's often just want what the fans want. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't necessarily blame the fans for, you know, wanting more content. It's just the nature of the beast. The people that are providing the content, though, they should they should probably know better. Yeah. yeah. And, and granted, they're not showing like the whole fucking concert or anything, but you know, that's oh, a detail the, well, that that's yeah. a detail that people want to hear and they want to get it. Um, you know, I mean, to me. I try and see whoever, whatever band I can. And most of that money, most of the money it takes to get the shows don't go to the band. If I actually bought two fucking archive tickets because I brought up the wrong email when I went to link up to it. And I had, it was like, I had 20 minutes. I'm like, I don't figure this shit out. So I just bought another one. Uh, I'm like, I mean, yeah. and that's, I was able to, you know what I'm saying? But like, I'm like, okay, it's, it's still going to the band. Fucking cool. You know what I mean? I couldn't go to the show. And I mean, that's what, that's why they can keep doing what they do. Man. But- it's like, by the way, thank artists. you guys for helping us pay for these shows, like to go see them. You know, if it wasn't for yeah. you guys, no way I'd be able to pay $40 to watch concert. So true, true, a lot yeah. of this is because of you guys. So I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, so the least I can do is to come up with a review or talk about them as much as I can. So thank you guys. Yes, thank you guys. And the easiest way to support us, if you would like to, is obviously with just Super Chats and our Patreon at patreon.com slash guys and guys. But if you don't want to, Spend any money, you don't have to. Just show us a little love by hitting the like button, maybe subscribe, maybe go over to our Twitter or TikTok or our Instagram or something. Just hit the follow button because all those little things help. Yeah, even just being here is very much appreciated. And uh, like we were talking about before with the Spotify, like, you know, people, you're hitting the five stars on the iTunes and stuff like that. Like all those things, they're all helping us just continue yeah. to get together and talk about this. And show. Lord Vordor, thanks for bringing us up. Yeah. To everybody who wants to react to something from the new bandmate concert, guess what? You got Choose Me. They gave that to everybody. Yeah. To share. So we, we have no reason. <laughs> you know, there's no excuse. Like, you can literally go react to Choose Me uh, if you wanted to. Because that was what they gave permission to uh, check out. Right? 
Yep. But anyways, stop talking about that. But by the way, Orange is releasing his fan cam footage. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah. that's later Three today, o'clock. right? Three o'clock. Three o'clock. Yep. Yeah, I imagine he took a lot of different ones and really good at syncing them up and making a complete video out of it. It's pretty cool, man. Yeah, I know it's going to be good. Thank you, James, for renewing for 16 months, my friend. Yes, GG so, Senpai. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right, guys. That was, uh, that was a lot of stuff. That was the bandmate review. Now, now we've got all, all four of us. Uh, we're able to say some stuff about it. Get our thoughts yeah. out. All right. It doesn't, it doesn't happen often that all four of us watch the same concert. <laughs> it's, it's actually pretty rare. I'll, I guess a good tail end of that is uh, only when Bandmade does. <laughs> just announced a Bandmade uh, members Misa and Akane both have signature gear coming out. Misa has a signature Black Cloud base. It's her uh, Jaguar style base. Mm. Uh, it's not cheap. About thirty five hundred bucks US. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's, a, that's a that's a good price for a high end yeah. like for a high end bass, you know what I mean? But uh Akane's drumsticks would probably be a lot more affordable for somebody like me. But she's got some uh fan made Akane sticks that are I think they're Vic Firth, aren't they? I don't know. Vic, that's Vic that's Firth. that's the type of thing I would buy, like even though I don't play drums. You know what I right. mean? Just to right, have right. the sticks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, twenty bucks for the sticks. That's cool though, dude. That's getting, that's recognition, sweet. dude. That's you know, it's just cool to see that. It's a it's a cool fucking thing. Yeah, man, dude. It I is, love dude. that they get shit named after them and like they team up with all this shit that I've heard of before I ever knew who Bandmade was. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it makes yeah. me feel proud. Like they're they're my my children that have grown up and <laughs> are succeeding in life. Heck yeah. Uh I, I was happy to see that Akane uses the same size sticks as me. Five B's, oh, <laughs> nice, nice. I think oh, yeah. they were five A's before, and she switched to five you B's. Use five so B, good. yeah, I do too. Those exact drumsticks I use, they're just such a good size, dynamic, yeah. versatile. And that's crazy because we have. Oh, I got five A. <laughs> oh, those I little wimpy twigs. <laughs> I just bought sticks. I don't know what the hell they are. <laughs> I didn't know until just now that there were different size sticks. Really? Oh, you just told me something. Yep. There's always extra size sticks. I mean, different sizes. You get like those seven A sticks, and it feels like you're holding like a like twigs. It's like, how do you even get any sound out now, of the drum with these? Uh, somebody <laughs> sent me some Aldius drumsticks, Marina signature drumsticks, and those are eighty five A. What the hell does that mean? What eighty five A? It's what it says. Hold it up to the. Huh. Oh, it's not gonna focus. Eighty five A. What the heck, dude? No clue. <laughs> They're no, not actually no. wood. They're wood veneer. Maybe that's <laughs> Yeah, I have no clue <laughs> to look that up. Yeah. What it's made out of to? shark teeth. <laughs> I still do they still it... sell the Miku guitar? No. The Zemitis? The Zemitis? The Zemitis? No, no it's <laughs> limited. That's what I, that's what I want. But yeah, hey, no, uh they did good. have when she uh for one of the songs, she grabbed a different Zemitis guitar as one of the, the telecaster style, but it had dove inlays on the neck. I think yes was. yeah I that's fucking that. sick that was the first time she used that guitar right or has she been using that new one she's that was one of the first styles she used i don't know if she's if that oh okay. guitar was used before. Mm. but those inlays are so fucking oh. sweet bro yeah. oh so I, I went and i looked to see if there's like a new model come out or something but i didn't find anything i had to stop the video because i thought it was a prs at first right I was, I was like wait a second oh yeah the birds I just saw birds i was like oh does she have a prs now and i'm like oh wait no that's the minus okay so they're saying that's it's new it wasn't yeah it was cool. new okay because i had never seen it before i was like oh she got a new guitar yeah dude that's sick it's still gonna be too expensive i didn't even notice minus. <laughs> <laughs> those aren't cheap man they're this is nice. gonna be more expensive than the last one that's yeah. that's the only way <laughs> to go Mm. Uh, thank you, Dan Molnar, for the twenty dollars super chat, my man. Yeah, thanks. Thank, thank you, you so much. Appreciate it. So, what's next? What is next? Right. Well, uh, I guess we're done. Has that all the band we talked band made out? I think. Do you guys have got some quick news while I go pee? Yeah, let's. Oh, let's sure. Let's all right. Here. He's been quick waiting for literally a half hour. He said, "I have to pee so bad a half hour ago." Yeah. All right, let's talk about the interesting <laughs> stuff. <sighs> All right, so <laughs> River Poe, what a name, right? <laughs> Champ, Ro- 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 still alive, idiot. The- Rosie's still in the chat room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Oh, I do want to bring that up. Thanks, Paul. Why is there no signature PRS for Konami? That they is don't have. They don't just hand out signatures like. I know. But they and just Gibson. gave it to the guy from Dragon Force, the guy that went out with him. He got a signature. Well, not signature. It's just a custom PRS. Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. It's not the same thing. But my point is, there is signature PRSs. Tremonti has one. Yeah. But I guess I guess he is bigger, huh? I mean, it is the yeah. weird that like like Miku <laughs> has her guitar, right? Like Konami doesn't have. Okay, so there's a signature bass now. There's signature sticks. There's a signature oh, rhythm guitar. But Did, like, where's Chad? Help me out. Did where's Zermitis Konami's approach a Konami initially? And she said no. I can't remember if that was a thing or not. I don't know why it's in my brain. Well, Interesting. PRS, I would think would endorse her by now. They do. I mean, she's been featured in videos her, and stuff. But a, and... I mean, a custom guitar. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I'm just shocked that they haven't done it yet. Yeah, we, we want one Still. with the signature on it, right? Like, we, we, we got to get the Konami signature on a guitar. We, we need to tell PRS that they'll sell because I'm 100% sure those I will mean, sell. Dude, they're, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they take their fucking time with that shit. Uh, Seize Today says that's right. So, so Midas offered, offered a, a guitar for Konami and she said no because she wanted to play. Okay. She had her dick tones already, which I tried to I tried to find a dick tones because they still make the Konami a dick tone, and those are expensive as hell too. <laughs> but yeah, she is a PRS ambassador. I mean, she's recognized definitely. It's got to be surprised she hasn't gotten her custom one yet from PRS. It'll happen. It'll well, happen. she when she's more well known. I mean, that's when it'll be a thing. I mean, it's if she was as known as she is here as she is. In our minds, then it would be a thing, but sadly, <laughs> she's not. <laughs> but my thing is, they have a better turnover rate when selling stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, even though they don't have the craziest following, that's why I'm surprised PRS is not looking at it. Because even like, let's say some of the other signature guitars, we're not like actively going out there going, I want the Carlos Santana signature guitar with Konami. Like, people buy bandmate stuff, like for sure. Oh, you know yeah. I mean? That's they, yeah, for they sure. should. Sales. They have to know that they would get guaranteed sales. I mean, I, I think it's a minus though. They they haven't put out another flappy pigeon model. They know that they would sell every fucking one. Mm. Yeah, but they, they haven't, which I kind of respect. You know what I mean? Well, because like, you can't overdo it. Yeah. You can't overdo it. There's diminishing returns eventually, right? Yeah. But like yeah. with the Konami one, that first one that comes out, yes, absolutely, 100. Bandmate fans are willing to travel across the fucking world to see them, bro. Like like they're gonna yeah. buy a guitar. It is interesting that Konami has signature guitars from Attic Tone. Because she doesn't use them anymore. So, yeah, like, make them. Yeah, who knows? I, well, oh, you know what? Like she's not really stop. promoting it's them. Contract, right? She's contract, probably contracting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if if they're still selling the ones mm -hmm. from a Dixon, she probably can't sign on with them. She's still under contract. Contract, I guarantee. You. I bet she has a ten-year contract too. Yeah, course, Maybe it's almost up. Team. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a good point. Anyways, sorry. Right, waves back. All right, let's talk about that quick news then. Quick news. Nemophila released a new song, Enigma, from their upcoming album, yes. 2024. And a short version of, I'm just going to call it Oscar, from the initial Impulse EP. The Oscar one was uh, included on their cover. That's the cover EP, right? Yes. Uh, the okay. OSKR thing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, by the way, if you want to find this song, uh, you got to go on to their youtube page and then go over to releases and click on the album called enigma to see the video you can't a, self, find a, it. a self plug here we're going live tonight and we're doing a breakdown of the track so you guys should join us on twitch <laughs> have any of you heard the song yet i'm gonna oh. hear it tonight i haven't heard it yet though uh i did i checked out uh, enigma and be completely honest, I made the video before I kind of looked in the mirror. I'm like, wow, I kind of look like shit. I don't think I'm gonna put out that video. <laughs> <laughs> Might do it anyway. Uh, I mean, you know, it that didn't stop me today. If I watch <laughs> it again, it's gonna be it's like I already saw this, blah blah blah. So I might just put I liked it, man. I like hearing <laughs> them try different stuff, do different things. Everyone yeah, I, you know, I have so many videos up where I'm like, man, I look terrible. I go I could, go to Ryan's <laughs> channel and just tell him how good he looks in that video, you know? Yeah. Uh, that made me feel better. Here's here's my summation of that song. It sounds like a Rob Zombie and a Knuckle Crack song to me. It sounds like a, a mashup Knuckle of crack. those two bands. Nickelback. I don't like saying the name. Knuckle it Crack. It sounds like a Rob Zombie and Nickelback song <laughs> smashed together. And why wouldn't you want to say your cool. favorite? Why wouldn't you want to say your favorite? <laughs> <band> <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I like your pants around your knees. There you go. <laughs> why? Is that why? <laughs> yeah, I should have just fucking left it alone. Now we got a more conversation about those assholes. Oh, Let's talk man. about them and Limp Bizkit, the two best bands ever in the world. Well, one of them. Uh, <laughs> Limp Bizkit has, or Fred Durst has a song with Wargasm recently, by the way. Awesome. Um, okay. But yeah, uh, I listened to, I, I okay, so I was like, what the fuck is this? Never feel Enigma? Did I miss a song? Or something because i had no idea that they were going to start like dropping singles from the new album i clicked on it i listened to the first like 20 seconds and then i turned it off um it sounded like when you said rob zombie i i thought power man 5000 <laughs> like right immediately yeah. there's still uh, zombie camp you know yeah yeah same <laughs> man, uh, yeah, little little <laughs> marilyn manson though the sound of the instruments was uh, so different it sounded yeah. so industrial uh, in comparison to everything else that they've done, I didn't let it get far enough to see if, like what kind of vocals she ended up doing because I do want to do a reaction for it. But um, was she was it mostly singing or screaming or back and forth? What, what made me th- like just in general? Yeah, in the song. Um, I don't think there's really much screaming in it. It was more just just good old singing. Yeah, it's a very different song, but I liked it. Hmm. Is this is the vocals the part that made you feel more Nickelbacky? No, the, the well, the melody in the chorus was a very Nickelback melody, but the the guitar, mainly the guitars, made me think of both. Like the the driving kind of sound, of the guitar and drums, and everything was very Rob Zombie-ish, and then the chorus was like really harkened to a Nickelback chorus. I was like, huh, that's similar, but it's, it's not interesting. Kroger. It's not Chad Kroger, <laughs> so I dig it. <laughs> Is I mean, yeah, that's the thing. It may be a familiar melody from that, but yeah, tonally, it's going to be completely different. Yeah, right? yeah. I really like the idea that they they keep doing all of these different genres and stuff like that because I think that they're really good at each of them. Uh, and Rob Zombie, Marilyn Manson, Paramount Five Thousand, that genre, that industrial metal genre, really cool for them to go into. I just hope they don't go too much further into the the nickelback zone with any of the other songs if that's the case i haven't yeah. gotten to it i'm just taking your word for it on this one they're but, fans uh, too they've worn their they've worn shirt nickelback shirts when they've done covers and stuff yeah but I mean, you know what they like a lot of shit i don't like it's, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. just judging by the oh, covers no. that they choose uh you know so we're a little all over the place yeah uh, but you can't oh, judge what what the new album is going to be by one song that's for damn sure <laughs> no oh, you did say smelody yeah he said huh? Schmel- he said Schmelody. I thought I misheard that. <laughs> that was funny. I, I respect it. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Dane, thank you so much for the super chat, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. Yeah, thank you, man. Thanks you to, so you much, the man, brother. Special, special shout out to Eric, too, because he always helps me see the Batman concerts. So thank you, man. Yeah, dude. He was cool as hell. Yes. Thank you, Eric. It was fun hanging out with you, too. Yeah, in Minneapolis. In Minneapolis. <sighs> yeah, Eric's got me out to California that first time. Well, got me a, a ticket oh, out yeah. there, gave me a reason to head out there. I'm like, fine, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> but help me, you know, uh, see the shows and have a place to stay. So, yeah, dude. Big fan of that guy. How uh, was the mix of the Nemophila song? Was it pretty good? Do we, what you could hear? Bro, yeah, from I what know. I heard, it was like literally like you got a, a picture like how Manson would mix his music or or, or Rob Zombie. Yeah, you know, it's very make like it. that. Like those the like the guitar, like the Ryan. Was it like a synthesizer that was the other sound that was not a guitar, like a, or a keyboard yeah, or dude, something? That's that's what it's like. Zombie, fucking Rob Zombie, big rock track. Yeah, and that you part is guitars loud. that are stacked <laughs> and with synths that are stacked, and it's this wall of fucking sound. Yeah, yeah, exactly, wall of sound. That's the perfect way to explain it. So, so you might love it, Alan. You might also hate it. I really don't know how you're gonna feel about it because it's way different than every other mix that they've done before well i mean the i gotta give marilyn manson and rob zombie credit for their mixes i mean well, pr- production wise mix. they're but yeah. they're also the best at that type of stuff right like the, yeah. they're the top i mean and to be fair like you have to be good at production and mixing when you're doing like certain types of industrial metal like marilyn manson does otherwise it could sound really bad yeah, <laughs> yeah. especially There's if you're just so gonna play going like a couple chords like if if like your guitar is just a couple chords like the production mm-hmm. better be fucking awesome <laughs> exactly yeah, for sure exactly. all right well i'm excited to break sure. it down i can't wait to separate the tracks see what what we oh. find what do we got next uh well, well, I guess that that was actually part of the main thing. Quick news: uh, Lady Baby returns, announces new members. More details will be coming soon. More new members? 
What? And how many members are they going to have? Yeah, they already announced their new member. Uh, that was okay. oh, Lady Baby. Never, I'm fucking mixing up with Baby Beard bullshit. Oh, sorry. It is so confusing. The Lady Baby, <laughs> Baby Beard. Is there a baby I no, lady? I have no interest in Lady Baby. Honestly, I just is there, uh, is there a Beard a Baby too? What is that? What that was pre Lady Beard? Yeah, yeah. Like this is after Lady Beard. Lady Beard started Lady Baby with them. There was they were together at once, and then uh, Ray did Bratz afterwards, and yeah. then. And then, uh, of course, Lady Beard did Baby Beard. That's just, yeah. The Lady Baby lore is is, is deep and confusing. It's like an idol group. Oh, Lady Baby. Okay. Is. Well, that's. This might be a little off topic, but what did we talk about? What you guys would think of uh, bandmate collabing with The Warning? Like several. Just... We've been over it before, I think. You mean like last week oh. or? I don't remember what happened. Like, did they officially say that they're going to? No, 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 no. Oh, no, okay. no. But they like took a picture together at was that Lollapalooza? Or... Mm -hmm. I yeah, don't remember where? Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, I think our main assumption is that that's that's probably. I, if you were to ask me, like, what's the best chance of any band that we just know off the top of our head that's going to be on this collab with Bandmate on their new album? I would say Warning is probably the highest percentage for me. But even so, I I can't think of how. Like what kind of song it would be like how they would pull that off? There's so much. They're so different. It's cool. <laughs> I'm glad they love each other. And they, they would. I'm sure they'd be willing to work together. But I don't know how. I have. Well, it, it's not like they're gonna have like every member of both bands. So it'll probably just be like a vocal. The vocals. No, no. You know, I was gonna say vocal. they all do vocals in the warning, so I can see those three like doing vocals with on a bandmate track. That's what I predict. I don't predict them really playing instruments. I predict those three girls are going to be doing vocals. True. Because they're true, all true. amazing vocalists, especially Pau uh, and um, yeah. Dan. They're two extremely talented vocalists. Mm. I love their vocals. I don't that know. makes a lot of sense. I want yeah, two right. drum sets, two basses, <laughs> three guitars, <laughs> six fucking microphones. You want to turn this into Gatrick spin? No. Is what, is what you're saying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> One <laughs> I want them to put all their instruments down and just to sing a cappella. How about that? Yes. Call it Doll's Basket. It would be such, dude. I think though, if like if people are speculating in the chat, if Danny guessed on a bandmate song, how what like different kind of energy it would be? It would just be so fucking wild. Yeah, it'd it be awesome, dude. It would be awesome. Yeah, well, those girls are phenomenal vocalists. Man. Killer That's Konami solo vocal. and a warning song, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. Like with their voices, I think Alan, you're onto something there. Yeah. Their, it, their, their voices, voice bandmaids, like composition and instrumentation. I'm telling you that's right what we'll now. Get. It'll be go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was gonna say with the warning, I, I think they're so good that I predict like when they start getting into their like their mid 20s late 20s they're going to have solo albums like as singers yeah. <laughs> like that's how good i think they are you know but as far as far as collab goes I, I i see a single from each band and they're each gonna have different guests on each one from each band like it's not gonna be one song or That'd whatever it's gonna to be do it. yeah yeah uh, you know a couple or a few or whatever but at least one like with bandmade and them as a feature then the warning with part of bandmade as a feature would be fucking cool man that's what we need to do for guys and guys is each produce a song featuring guys and guys. You know what okay. I'm saying? Like we each right take now. over production Go. and make like a four song EP oh, right on. each produced by a different person. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, cool. I just want, now that you guys talk about, I remember talking about last week, but my brain is so fried from this week. So that's understandable. Okay. I really okay, don't want to see yeah. a collaboration with Dragon Force because I can't, can't stand yeah. this Dragon Force. <laughs> Dragon Lee's awesome, dude. On he, he's awesome, but I tried Dragon to listen to Force the song. I was listening with... to like the top whatever songs, and I'm like, uh, nope. <laughs> Just a Dragon Force baby metal. Makes I want to say something. You know, huh? Dragon Force was phenomenal live, and it made me like them more when I saw yeah. them. Yeah, but did like, I? I could did be like biased because like actually meeting him it's like he doesn't help him. you know how it is when you meet somebody you're like it kind of like makes everything elevated you know yeah. you're like oh, yeah. such a nice right. person you know but they were amazing live yeah they did were, i tell you about when i saw them live and they played each other's guitars during the solo 
No, I think he, I think he mentioned it. Uh, uh, just real did. quick, they played a guitar solo in one of their songs, and they were literally playing the each other's guitars <laughs> with oh, their wow. like like in front of them. It's not like one reached over the other one's back. Oh, and, like in like, face they to were, face. Yeah, they were face to face. They were like tap. Just, they were like tapping each other's guitars to play wow. the song. It was pretty fucking nasty. I've never seen that before. <laughs> That's really cool. Hell yeah. Awesome. Um. But I like them. I like them with doing a guest guitar spot on a band me song would be cool. But yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. I like them with baby metal. I feel like it's a good, a good mesh. You know, the baby metal Dragon Force thing. They've worked with them before. I feel like band made again. Give me Slash. Slash is what I want to hear on the band made album. Interesting. I I see it as a possibility though because they Herman Lee had band made on his stream. Yeah. You know. So. I don't know. Who right. cares? <laughs> don't know. All right. Uh, Atarashi Gako performs in San Francisco. Sure. This is a report from J Rock News. Let's see here. They're still, uh, they're still, they're doing a lot, man. Playing a lot. Yeah. They're just getting more and more popular. Yeah. Why isn't stuff opening? I don't know. You, you, want me to, goes, you might have read what you got here. Oh, it's opening. Here it is. Idol Unit and YOLO Harbingers Atara Shigako invaded the historic Regency Ballroom on November 8th, turning a Wednesday night into the most unforgettable concert San Francisco hosted this fall. Wow, that's high praise. Nice. Yeah. YOLO Harbingers. I love that. Uh, <laughs> Yo, <laughs> that's nice. Uh, singing and leaping to a bonanza of electronica, hip hop, and traditional Japanese Kyokyoku oldies, Atarashi Gako left no doubt that its meteoric ascent as the wildest head turner in J pop, or perhaps all of TikTok this year, was anything but a fluke. I agree with that, man. They deliver again and again and again. Yeah. And I, uh, people that see them are just like, they're one of those undeniable things. It just hit me. I don't know if I've seen them actually like a live video. Yeah. Like, I wonder if they're going to make a, you know, live performance videos from this tour they just did. They do the whole skits, man. Like, it's pretty cool. Like, they have their choreo is not like when you watch their music videos, you see that their choreo is different than like everybody else's choreo, right? Like, it's very, very story driven a lot of the time, right? Like, you'll see them like fighting and stuff like that. When they play live, it's even more of that. It turns like that choreo becomes the entire focus since there's no music video to back it up. So it's almost like a, a play being told while they're doing the, the vocals and the dancing. Yeah. That's very so much cool. perf- performance artists, you know, that's, that's yeah. like a, that's a, a huge part of what they do. Go it's ahead. like that's almost thing, like a like musical. That, <laughs> yeah. Like in that Tokyo calling video, that's the thing that stuck out to me the most is like it, it was not only like really goofy and cheeky and you know their attitude but also amazing like visual effects being created with just choreography like what the heck pretty mind-blowing sure uh moving on we got coco royal youtube channel had an interview with rio you know Shita from uh gnosis uh-huh. and it's a youtube video and uh says i was lucky to have a chat with rio about his new project I'm assuming it's Gnosis or it's Kenosis. I don't know. His inspiration and personal experiences, his quick return to the stage after leaving Crystal Lake, and why it's better to come with glasses to his shows. He also taught me a bit of screaming technique, though I might need some practice there. That's cool, man. So it's Kenosis. Oh, right. yeah. Kenosis is awesome. We put out a reaction to it that Kodak did, and it okay. was, I love it. It's really good. We talked about this last week. He, this side project is amazing. Awesome. Sweet. Cool, man. Whoa. Uh, da, 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 da. Hanabi, good things at festival in Melbourne, Australia this weekend. I've been hearing some, got a couple, couple Aussies on the Discord, and uh, they've been able to see them and just say how awesome of a show it was. It's pretty awesome, man. Yeah, you got to sing with Limbiscuit. Yeah. What? Really? Yeah. What, what song? I forget what it was. She just, uh, she didn't really get to do any lines. I think it's just more of uh, hitting the screams and stuff. What was it, though? Was it yeah. Nookie? I don't know. I don't know which song it was. I want I to hear. Cr- I, I want to hear her do. I'll eat you a lot. <laughs> That'd be awesome. She, she uh, Cookie Monster says she's done Nookie and Break Stuff. Oh, I want to hear her do on. Break Stuff. Is that anywhere uh, online? I have it online. Limbiscuit Nookie featuring Yukina of Anabi Live 2023. 
Hell yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Oh, we actually okay. I'm gonna watch that later. So yeah. yeah. I'll put the link in the chat. Is it weird that this that this channel, even as much as we shit on Limp Biscuit, has actually made me like Limp Biscuit more? Hey, I don't shit on Limp Biscuit. I love no, Limp Biscuit. No, me. No, uh, no do. you don't. But they, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're not the only people here. But I still enjoy the music that I enjoyed when I heard it. You know what I mean? It's still it's cool seeing an uh be associated with them. That's a huge. That's a huge thing for them, man. It's a big deal. The fact that Limp Bizkit is still, they can go to or play their own, their old shit in different ways and still just Hell yeah. pull in a crowd, dude, that's awesome. So to be pulled in by them, that's awesome. Dude, I'm going to say this and I'm going to say it completely unironically. Limp Bizkit, one of the bands of their generation. Literally. Yeah. yeah. One oh, of the, for sure. Yeah. Like one of the, the bands of, of their generation. Their generation. Like, but yeah. they are literally like, if you were to look at that generation, People are going to wreck They might be one in the top three most recognizable bands of that era. Yeah. I try and mention that dude, uh, Wes Borland, he's, he, he doesn't get enough credit for being an influence on a shitload of bands, dude. Like yep. taking, you know, Oh, I can just, I can do this kind of stuff, you know? And he, he was just doing whatever the hell he wanted to do. I love that. I always uh, tell people, listen to break stuff rhythm and tell me where you've heard it before. Like when you learn that, it's it's easy to play that you learn it, but you're like, it's just a weird counting that you're just like, what? But it's yeah. just like, I have not heard anything like to compare to those rhythms that he does. Yeah. In the first the two albums. Compositions are great, man. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's why when West Borland left, it was trash. It was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> get out of here, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> like, All right, let, let's, let's not get stuck on Limp Bizkit again, guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is now turning into a Limp Bizkit podcast. Again. Oh, God. Dude. <laughs> I don't even know what you guys are talking about anymore. We do oh. we do it like every week now. It's I don't know. Well, because they're associated with an obvious. I mean, that's yeah, what, yeah, yeah. That's what it brings up every right. time. Uh Duran Gray, Europe Tour 24 from Depression to Blank, I guess is what it's called. All right. So Duran Gray. Shock rockers, would you call them? Shock rockers? They like to uh they're yeah. super talented, man. They have they have like a huge range of music and sometimes they're just damn creepy. Yeah, yeah we talked about they, this they do like they'll do like the they'll do like eight minute epics too. So like, right, yeah, they're pretty crazy, dude. Like you got to commit yourself to one of their their big songs, right? Yeah, Sims, visual tape. Sims on tour uh, in Australia, September twenty twenty four. Not on tour; they will be on tour. Play Dead World tour. So try and catch Sim. Uh, Otto, December thirteenth release, new album, um, cover album to be released. The album will feature a total of 10 songs received the most requests for Otto to sing through voting, including Vocaloid and J-pop songs. So there's no a, like a... This uh, album is going to sell so incredibly dude, well. That's all we're going to hear about. On Holy kind of shit. Dude, we're going to get... It's 10 songs? Yeah, that's all it's going to be. It's literally going to be our top 10 <laughs> the week after it comes out. But people voted on what songs for her to sing. That's pretty awesome, dude. To, yeah. To just do that. And uh, also uh, back to Hinabi, they have a two man tour coming up, which is cool. Um, there's an interview on uh, Rumike, um, which Lisa is a host of, super popular singer Lisa. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's on their YouTube channel. The interview is so if you want to check that out. I so feel that's like Lisa the other artist on the two man tour. No, uh, no, the link to goes to the YouTube video. I didn't, I didn't have a. Uh... She's the oh. host. Yeah, Speaking she's the host of, of the show. Hanabi, we do have a podcast coming out that Eric did for us. He uh, interviewed one of the bands that opened up for them in Australia. So that should be also releasing out through the week. I forgot about that. Cool. Um, oh, sweet. It's almost ready, but we'll we'll get that out for you guys. And also, I did an interview with Fox Lake, who also opened up for them. So uh, hit those notification uh, bells. Yeah, hit so that bell for notifications. All coming out on the Gaijin Guys podcast. Ding. Woo. We need to get an actual bell. Ding. Right. Cookie Monster, come with the info in the chat. Hanabi is opening for Sim in Japan. That's going to be pretty huge for oh, them. Okay, Sim. Perfect Wait. match. And Perfect match. Yeah, that's awesome. And from Lisa's Instagram post, she's actually a fan of Hanabi. That's what. That's cool, dude. That's, yeah, their styles are so different. <laughs> yeah, oh, The man. band's that's called awesome. The Last Smarter, by the way. That's the podcast on, that's coming out during the week. <clears throat> Sweet. Okay. Uh, I guess we're on the top tens. 
That's the quick news. That's the news. Top ten. It's all the news. You want to save? So you want to save the songs of the week for next week? Just do those no, next I, week. Well, I don't know. We could still. I guess that was supposed to be after that. <laughs> uh, well, only. Um, are we trying to finish around two, or we want to keep going forward? Well, I'm fine to keep going if you guys are ready. You want to talk about songs? Hey, let's, go, let's, let's talk about the songs right now since we just listen, we listen to them. We're going to forget yeah, it. Sure, we don't. Let's do it. Yeah. Well, so I know I got a video out. Alan, you put a video out too of the songs? Yeah. Yep. I started, All I right. did what Ryan did. Yeah. So if you want to check them out, see what we thought about on our own instead of what we think about in front of the other people, you can see what we really thought. <laughs> I forgot what I said anyway. So, <laughs> so uh, I don't know. What'd you guys think of them? Do you have a favorite, Alan? Mine was Dim Rays, 100%. But I also love the first two other songs. I also did a reaction to them already. I yeah. That was so fucking weird. Like, it was just enough brain hurt, you know? Wh which song was but, this? The Dim Rays one? Cause like, yeah, because they did these really weird melodic minor kind of things and like chromatic stuff underneath, it. regu underneath regular melodies. So it's like really throws you for a loop and i'm sitting there like just <laughs> trying to hear like the notes underneath it i'm like what the fuck is happening here so i absolutely loved it it was just enough of weird it wasn't like too crazy where like i had a headache afterwards like pale dust does to me sometimes i'm like i, don't, I can't even compute so it's just enough uh brain hemorrhaging to enjoy it and uh, i can't complain just enough <laughs> bro i actually like this one way better than the one from last week that we checked out from them like the one last week was good but this one was awesome. I have to agree with you because it's more it's more unique. It's yes. more like, oh, if they stay with this, this is gonna be dim rays sound. Like yeah, what you're talking about with the with those like minor to like the it just felt so like like almost off putting, but like in a good way. Exactly. I don't know how yeah. it worked, dude. Like, like somehow they created oh. a falling sensation with the chord progression. Yes, yeah. I got it was crazy. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's, it was a really cute uh, look cute. <laughs> it was a really clever song. She, <laughs> really I, I'm I'm, cute. I'm looking at a picture of her right now, and so like <laughs> words are getting uh, mixed up a little bit. But yes, it was a very clever way of writing. Like I wouldn't be able to because this is one of those things where like if you don't understand how like guitar works, you wouldn't be able to write something like this. I wouldn't be. I, I don't even know what the fuck they were thinking when they wrote. Or no, if you wrote it, <laughs> you would probably not have the balls to go with it because you'd be like, oh, that doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> But even though it does work, it does work. You know, it, it makes sense, but it doesn't. This is why you shouldn't learn chords, people. You just do whatever you want until it sounds good. Pushing on the boundaries right there. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it was well, a cool I, song. I really like back that song too, man. I like the hip hop part though. She goes into like Same. the beat oh, yeah. changes up. She's into the rap. I'm like, fuck yeah, this is great. Oh, yeah. just a, and just then it's cool... like straight back to metal, like two bars yeah, later. It's great, man. <laughs> I agree. That was really good. Uh, East of Eden, I was kind of eh about it before, and I gave I gave it another listen today, and I like it more. Like take look, take a look at it from kind of the violinist perspective of it, perspective of it, because I, me, I'm coming at it through like Yuki, Yuki from Deep Dive is in this band, yeah. and that's what I want to hear. But I, I looked at it a different way, and I have a little more appreciation for it, just as a as a construct, as, as a you know, the whole production wise, it's it's a really beautiful song. I get what you're saying because. In my reaction to it, we talked about it on Dicotic Channel where we're saying, when I'm listening to it, I'm like, this feels like something I shouldn't like, but something <laughs> yeah. about the singer just captivates me, there's and I just, of, there's, just like it. There's a lot of key changes. <laughs> yeah. <And> I was <laughs> like, <laughs> like go, but they just going to need a little yeah. bit of therapy after it. <laughs> yeah. So your brain was hemorrhaging a little too yeah. hard. Yeah. Like, oh, God. <laughs> Isn't that what it's all about? Just feeling something. Even if it's brain hemorrhage, yeah, right. right <laughs> at letter. least I felt something. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's why I was like, all right, take a different look at this because you can't just be like, I don't like it because of this. It was, it was. There's some really cool stuff going on. What, Ryan? The bass? Did you hear, yeah, the dude? For bass? sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned that too. It's like whatever's going on. The bass is. Yes, like, she's oh, just I'm like going fire. freaking crazy over there. Guys, oh. I solo out the bass on our channel. Check it out. It is yeah. crazy. It is crazy. I'd solo that section out where she's just going off, like just for like a yeah, minute. At the end. I don't know how often have you heard violin, beautiful violin with slap bass underneath. Under, <laughs> yes. Under, like I never heard that before. Like, dude, slap this is and then rad. like insane finger picking, like Billy <laughs> yeah. Sheehan style. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Oh, that is new. Oh, now that you bring just, it up, I just I need to mention I totally didn't even make click with this that the singer from this band is the singer that worked with Konami and Akane yeah, for Mochito um, Cheese. Yep. What? Yeah. I think I heard that before and I totally forgot. But I, okay, I cool. think so too. That's very likely. <laughs> Wait. What about Twilight. Dude, that it, was surprisingly oh, yeah. good. Yeah. Same. So, so this was just like I it literally popped up on my feed and I and I looked at the thumbnail and I said, it looks like band made but in blue. So I clicked on it <laughs> and I was like, are they wearing made outfits? And then I was like, wait yeah. a minute, I think they're sailors, right? So they're supposed to be sailors. Sure. I was just listening to it. I didn't watch the video. I mean, they're on a ship. They're on a ship, but they've got like what looked to be like yeah, made outfits, yeah, those basically. So, but, yeah. but, it, but I think they're sailors. When yeah. I first listened to this, I was like, the mixing is a little weird to me. And I'm like, oh, they must be a band just starting off. But Wait, it- let me guess why. Let me guess why. Because you felt like the vocals were sitting on top of the rest of the music. Yes. yes. And, I- the piano, and the piano was the same thing. It was like very separated. But I could hear all the talent and stuff and how the song was supposed to be. I'm like, this is really fucking cool. Because the screams were awesome. The melodies were really cool. <laughs> I, I so did not expect those screams to happen. Yeah. yeah. And then I absolutely didn't expect the saxophone to happen. Yes. <laughs> like, For sure, dude. Like, it, <laughs> but it just but hit I'm so cool nice. It. <laughs> it was All in right. the perfect spot. And it was really short, saxophone. too, at first, too. It was just like... <laughs> like dude, like it, felt like a, it felt like a spy thriller. Like, <laughs> the tone of the song. song. Because I went to their channel, and I'm like... What do they do? Are they have like quarter million subscribers? Yeah, dude, they're yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, and I, had I had never heard. It. I had never heard of them or anything about them before. They're like a fucking rock band, like <laughs> half metal. The riff, the the main riff of the song was actually pretty fucking wicked, bro. I got I got sad news though. They somebody left a comment already on the video saying that the sax player already left. Oh, oh that's uh, which which was like a highlight for me. So, <laughs> okay, listen, it was really cool that they had a saxophone and nothing against this girl, but she didn't, it wasn't like she did anything crazy. Just, just, just bring another saxophone player. Oh, yeah, you champ. listen to this. So somebody left a comment saying on the, on the reaction that we posted, it says, am I the only one who discovered this song because of a YouTube ad? That might be why you saw this. Oh, maybe could be. Maybe they're promoting it right now. Yeah. I don't know, but it's like it's been out for and they've been around for a few years, right? You said after looking at their videos, like they're not new. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm looking at right now, they've been out for a while. So that's the part that's weird to me about it, though. Like they're a Japanese rock band that's been out for a while that does heavy music, has a screamer and a saxophonist, and none of us have ever heard of them before. How did that happen? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the song itself came out two months ago. So that means the sax player left just recently. Oh. Just, just crazy. Just wait until we saw it. Now they're gonna get a big. Maybe they're like now they're gonna get a big push. You know, get some more subscribers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> get that big guy, you guys push. <laughs> Here we go again, hooking up I'm these curious. bands for free. <laughs> well, I'm glad that they're like paying for advertising because that means they're gonna go watch our only reaction that's posted on. <laughs> <laughs> right, but hey. yeah, I, it does blow my mind that we've never heard of them before. Hey, Dim Ray's hit a thousand subs now. So there you go. Oh. Yeah. Fuck nice. yeah. There you go. Hell yeah. Where were we they actually, at when they uh, can monetize? They had a few hundred. I heard them. It was 650. And then we posted nice. a reaction and we got a message from them be like, thank you so much. We went up 200 subs. I'm like, no way. No oh, cool. way. Like there's like 900. So now they're up at that's a thousand. That's awesome, dude. That's what it's Ryan, all about. Yeah. So that's pretty exciting to hear. Another reason why you should subscribe, hit the bell because there's some news coming to that end too about Dim Rays. Keep, oh, yeah. Keep, mm. Sweet. Hit those bells, press that subscribe button, and let's get into the top ten. Top, top ten. ten. Oh. All right, we're done. All right, guys, you guys have a good one. <laughs> there it is. There's your top ten. <laughs> there it is. Fourteen. Shit. Number twenty-two. Number thirty-one. It doesn't matter. Uh, scrolly, scrolly, scrollerton. So we got the uh, the new entries first. You got the new entries up there, there, Ryan. I don't have shit up. Okay, I'll read off the new entries right now. It's on the thing. Go, uh, Yeah, read it's just on, it's, I'm just reading off of YouTube right now. But we got at uh, number 52, passcode with the myth passcode, reverberate, plus tour final at something. Uh, it's By the way, 
live songs. Bit. You can make your entry over on our Discord server if you're wondering how to make entries. Right. And what's like our Discord how you server called? The first five of them. I, oh, <laughs> what, what for? Oh, I'm go, I was going to go up. <laughs> That's how you. But did then this. it went down. <laughs> uh, and then yeah, so right underneath that was was Groundswell. So they, they're they're still. Oh, there it is. Hanging out there, I guess. <laughs> uh, Love bites, stand and deliver live. Uh, number thirty-five. Uh, is that Kenosis? At number thirty-one. Yeah. With I don't, yeah, Yakusai. I think yep. it is. Good uh, job. Uh, Twenty-two is Sheena Ringo with uh, I can't read that. I'm a cat's eye. You can't read that. No, I can't. It's all blurry for me. Oh, I uh, am a cat's eye Bambi version from Shogyo Mujo. Okay. And then 14 is easy to eat in with the song that we were just talking about. Hell Those yeah. are the new entries. Sweet. New entries of the week. Sweet. Right. I got the link of Want me to do the top 10? Yeah, do your yes. thing, brother. Okay. Do it. Uh, number 10 is My Go, down two spots with uh, Let's Sing, Let's Ring. Uh, all, go- all girl band from the Bang, Green- Bang Dream franchise. Down two. Number nine is Baby Metal with Maya, up two. What? Well, that's, that's cool. Where'd that come a, from? Yeah, from? Two places to come version? in at number nine. Uh, Baby Metal finally reached the top ten with the track from their latest live DVD Blu-ray, Baby Metal Begins, the other one. Wow. All right on. I did not know they had a live version. Surprise. Uh, number eight, Luna C, down one with the song G. We watched this last week. We did, didn't we? Yep. Yeah, we, we did. did. That, for the Patreon thing? Yep. Yep. For Patreon. Well, cool. Then people check it out. Uh, it's from their best of album. Right on. Okay. Uh, seven. Ave Mujica is down two. So we got somebody's going to be up here at the top. We watched uh, that three weeks ago on our Patreon. Song yeah. was that Ave Mujica. It's a good song. It's almost like we're watching all the things on our top 10 finally. It's almost <laughs> like our top 10 is built just as a promotional tool to send people to our Patreon to watch our reactions. <laughs> <laughs> which it absolutely too on the nose, but <laughs> which it absolutely wasn't. But we I just, just stumbled on into that. Right now. We are so in tune that we're. Uh, I'm going to uh, stop. Pro- I'm going to stop promoting our Patreon. Number six is a, is Luz with uh, "Shut the Horny <laughs> Monsters Cry." Dude, we watched this today on Patreon. <laughs> we did watch this today. Well, good for us, man. You know, it's about time we watch your own stuff. <laughs> down one, baby metal, Matari featuring Tom Morello. Oh, one. But they got oh, two. Five. They got two now. Why? They got yeah, two not, in the top ten. Yep, now. two in the top ten. That's awesome. Uh, number four, Hey Smith, say my name is down one. Hmm. Number three, uh, new. Wow, coming in new at number three, FZMZ with Broken Games. The band is Ooh. FZMZ. And the salmon sushi roll. I. I'm who hungry. wants to bet with me one hundred million dollars that this is an anime opening song? Oh, one hundred million. Dollars. I will bet one hundred million dollars that it is. You're on. That it is. If it's effort. not, then you owe me a hundred million dollars. Exactly. Yeah, but then, but then you owe me if it is. Wait. No, <laughs> I just no. You that's, can't that's just off. take that's the off. bet in one way. Rules. <laughs> it, does, it goes <laughs> both ways when you make a bet. <laughs> I think you guys should make the bet. Anyone else want sushi all son? Yes, I do. No, Five I artists at the forefront of the music scene who've created big hits both domestically and internationally have gathered as a special band called FZMZ, pronounced Fathoms. Of course it is. Uh, <laughs> each wearing <laughs> each wearing a mask avatar. They have debuted with the opening theme song for the October anime series Shangri La Frontier. I told you that's what it was. Champion oh. only a hundred million dollars. I can't believe what? I didn't call that. Oh my god. <laughs> Fathoms. <laughs> fathoms right though on. sure if you say so fathoms. that's what that's what it said yeah, uh uh-huh. number two 10 feet with three equations still at number two hmm. and number one is still one old okay rock jesus for the love of god what is <laughs> all these changes here? and why are they still there hey it's it's a good song guys congratulations it's not even like they have so many better songs it's kind of starting to drive me crazy no it's, it's a good song man it's fine <laughs> You should <laughs> like it more, Chance. It sounds like, it sounds like a fucking more. puddle of mud. Go, go watch wow. my reaction. Go watch my reaction to it, and then you know, then you'll like it more. Sounds One like okay puddle rock. of mud. Sounds like puddle of mud. No, it sounds nothing like puddle of mud. I don't know. This is not, I was about to say, what the fuck? I just <laughs> thought of a band that like I would make fun of, <laughs> and that's, that's <laughs> where it <I> came from. <laughs> she <laughs> fucking hates me. <laughs> la, 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 la. Okay. 
right. <laughs> all right. Let's get the hell out of here. Yeah. Guys, if you want more from us, you could always go to all the things I've been promoting egregiously in this podcast i don't know why <laughs> but patreon.com slash guys and guys we have reactions for like almost everything in the top 10 our tiktok everything is just called guys and guys everything that's social media we exist in all of those spheres How do you spell that Jim? we are everywhere yeah but why do you spell that can you spell that what, what? guys and guys yeah i want to see if you i can do that G-Z- like right on the screen you looked at the screen that's cheating Dude, he's right though it's just a bunch of z's and g's right <laughs> g's and g's that's our first single <laughs> yeah, yeah i love it all right everybody oh. we will see you next week oh, oh 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 and i forgot during my week but i put out a music video this week so mm, ah. go to my channel and check that out. There you, you go. Want. It's the oh, most yeah. boring song on my whole album. So well, <laughs> no, there's it's promotion for you. <laughs> Which you probably means that it's got a great chorus and everybody's going to want to sing along to it. So, And it repeats three times. Oh, oh, oh my God. No. <laughs> I hate this song. The, the nah. ultimate anti-Ryan move. <laughs> Is there any? Is there any? Is there There's any? Five uh, key changes. Yeah, key changes. Oh, fantastic! I can't wait to hear it. Five key changes and three choruses, motherfucker. That's <laughs> four point five minutes long. Oh, There's two uh, fake ends. It's to pretty it. much the worst. So, oh well. <laughs> I also, agree, something Wolfram. to mention real quick, guys. We just started releasing the newsletter again. We uh, we started back up. Shout out to Andrew. He's been getting that together. Shout out hmm. to Jonathan Lane, who just joined the team. And uh, it's helping us with guys to guys podcasts and all the reporting and stuff for all the concerts. So, okay. so welcome, welcome, John. And there's a link to sign up for the newsletter. So uh, Andrew puts a lot of work and effort into it and is going to be sending those out weekly. So another reason to join the email list, do not worry. We'll not bombard you with spam. It's just going to be a newsletter a week about uh, current news, Japanese topics. Oh yeah. Yeah. I like getting my weekly emails from Alan. For me, yeah, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't it says say that. You. Yeah, it, it says does. it says from Alan. I'm like, oh, I got an email for. Oh, it's just fucking. I, li- I like it that way though. It feels more personalized. Like you're oh. delivering it yourself. <laughs> Andrew, can we uh, make this from the guys? <laughs> <laughs> it's just Alan saying, "Hey." <laughs> I didn't know it said Alan. I didn't say that on mine. I mean, so yeah, but but think about it this way: like, if you were gonna get a like a letter from Bandmate, would you rather it say Bandmate or Miku? Oh, that's um, true. I'm Sam Miku. But nobody wants to hear from me. They're like, Alan, true. fuck that guy. Unsubscribe. <laughs> Why is he? <laughs> so we need it from like Ryan or Wave. Like the people want to receive messages from that. Why do you say no. that? <laughs> this, this, me. This, the self talk. All, you know? all I do is gonna... make weird sounds into the microphone. Will people enjoy that, Wave? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's make a one more weird sound, which sounds like goodbye, everybody. See you later. Uh... Kazoo outro, go.